Welcome. Next stop, the Fashion Bunker. Please sit back, relax and enjoy your journey.
Hello? Everybody to the midweek a live stream in the fashion bunker. I'm taking you. I'm taking you to Milano Fashion Week, darling. But first, I have to plump my lips. Up. How's it going? Hi, everybody. Hey, Kev. Hey, Gloria Retinos. My mods in the house. Bakery Mafia. KDB. V Sense. Gosh, get a life. Diva on a budget. KDB. Tina. Melanie Rice. Corey Emerson, Carolyn um, Nedweb, Nat, Naru, Cha, so many people. Uh, Miss B, Shitsus, Shitsus, <laughs> Mary Smart, hey Teresa McGuire, Katie B, Katana, Joyful Remorse, David Allen Green. Ah, oh, Debbie, there you are. I was like, where's my my fifth? Hello. There you go. Hi, Lil, Stro Lil, Lil Star Shine Monarch, Corey K. Hi, everybody. How's it going? Let me put on this little thing here. So uh, Debbie says, just was trying to get TV to work. Uh-oh. Is it working? Hi. The bunker is filling up, right, Gloria? Thumb up the live stream, you guys. Uh. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Top the live stream. And for everybody, for our for our rewatch crew that watches us after the live stream is over, be sure to, you know, comment down below to help out the fashion bunker by adding a timestamp for every topic that begins. In today's case, most of the topics are going to be fashion shows because we're going to review Milan Fashion Week. Um, and yes, one of those shows is going to be Moschino, of course, I'm ready for that. But Chanel! Uh, yes, no Chanel, no, no bubbles. There is no Chanel in, in Milan. I mean, there's a boutique, but there's no fashion show. So I'm going to take this off. This is a very, at this point, heritage piece. This is um, um, Jeremy Scott's first earring. Jeremy Scott's first earring for Moschino from the Fall Winter 2014 collection. I do have two of them. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the metal that Moschino used back then, the quality is not the best. So I will put on this earring again when we review the Moschino show. I still have, look at that, everything. Still in its original Moschino Couture box. Here's the second one. And then with its little dust bag and all of the, so each earring was wrapped in this kind of stuff here. So, I mean, I, I mean, do we archive or do we archive? Yes, we archive. So here they are. We'll go, we'll go. So this is fall, winter 2014. Moschino by Jeremy Scott. Um, look how cute. In the boutique, they would kind of make a little drawing just to know what it is. Isn't that adorable? Earrings. Moschino. <laughs> so cute. I didn't do this. The The actual Moschino boutique did this. Aww. I know, right? Love that for them. So let me just put them delicately down here. Okay. So uh, I'm not going to wear them the whole time because I'm scared that something might happen to them, but we are going to wear them for the actual Moschino uh, review of the show. Now, we're going to begin this uh, journey, or if you want to say this uh, trajectory. Oh, hi, Ollie. How's it going with your Rivage Chanel palette? <laughs> Ollie says she's never going to buy Chanel <clears throat> makeup this year. Hey, Val. How's it going? Hey, Quinn, looking stunning. Thank you, darling. And uh, I'm sure you do too. 
And um, and I was like, Ollie, you're so gonna buy the makeup. And then she's like, I bought it. I was like, I told you. She's like, Well, the only thing I can say in my defense is, we'll go, we'll go, <laughs> we'll go, we'll go. I, eh, what else are you gonna say? There's nothing else to say, except I have some coffee. So look at that. Milan Fashion Week is filling up. The fashion bunker is filling up. You see, we got the peeps coming in. Yes, yes. They're all coming, honey. They're all coming. They're ready to sit to watch the show. Hey, Avatar Primus. How's it going? Hi, Ellie. Hi, Naru. Mm. Ah. Mm. Coffee. I needed the coffee. So this is the Tom Ford pre-show. <laughs> yes, can you believe? So Tom Ford has a pre-show. Oh, Kev says they're all coming. Uh, right, Kev? So we have Gloria Rethinos, Kev, and Debbie in the house, our mods, today. There's over 100 people watching, and there's only 38 thumbs up. Ya yeah, guys. Come on. We can zoo better. Zoo better. Can you give us more thumbs up, pl Po Lisa, thank you. Be kind. Be gentle. Rewind. If you know your VHS tapes, you know what I said here. Now, Tom Ford's uh, brand is uh, artistically directed by a dude called Peter Hawkins, right? So there you go. Oh my God, the hair. I just washed my hair and it's like all, it, it doesn't want to collaborate today. <laughs> my hair is like, no, I'm going to be straight and just flat as a yeah, just there's nothing you can do with it. Today didn't want to do curls. Um Oh, Debbie says I have to I have to speak as Tom Ford. So today I'm going to show you a cool. Well, actually Tom Ford is not, you know, he retired. So, he's not really in it anymore. But uh Seju Michiel, hello Jacob watching from Land Down Under. Well, how's it going, Seju? Kristen Penta, how's it going? Oh, hi American Princess. Hi, everybody. Thumb up the live stream, y'all. Let me take another sip of coffee while I get ready. So uh, as you can see, Tom Ford is filling up. We're about to watch the Tom Ford show and all the all the butchers are coming. Ah, oh, yes, Quinn. Okay. Where did she go? Where's she? Where? <laughs> okay, okay, girl. <laughs> yeah, fashion fashion show vibes, baby. Fashion show vibes. And also I'm wearing um from Jeremy's first and second, because this one went in production two seasons, but you could I got this spring summer 2015 from the Barbie collection. So this is the Jeremy Scott classic white cotton crew neck Moschino Milano with the double smiley. Okay, so that's what I'm wearing, you know, just, you know, supporting, uh, FYI, you know, Jeremy Scott left Moschino, so Jeremy Scott is no longer there, but there's other people there now. And what is interesting is, of course, that while Jeremy was at Moschino, what is this hair? Okay, while Jeremy Scott was at Moschino, the people that were like, buying Jeremy Scott from Moschino, they're like, yeah, Jeremy, yes, 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 yes. Now that Jeremy left... Everybody forgot about him. It's like he never existed. Well, Jeremy, I didn't forget, you see. So Jeremy used to follow me on Instagram and his, uh, uh, um, what's his name? Pablo, who's his like, uh, what does he do? Like his PR or whatever, assistance, producer. And then he and I stopped buying Moschino and then they all unfollowed me. And I'm like, you don't know what you're doing. I am your biggest asset because all of those bitches that are buying your shit right now and that are coming to your shows, invited front row, the second you leave Moschino, they will all forget you like you never existed. But who's going to keep remembering you and who's going to keep reminding people that you actually did a great job at Moschino? That's going to be this idiot. Because now is the time when Jeremy Scott needs the support where everybody dumped him and he's like not working anywhere. So, you know what I mean? Keeping it real. Ah, oh, Terry, my love. Thank you. Teresa Maguire donated $100.
I'm glad you streamed later today I was afraid I would miss it as I've been a doctor for several hours. My infection in my leg got worse, and I'm being referred to cardiologist as I'm having issues with my heart with irregular heartbeats and atrial fib. Wait, let me read the rest of it, because, you know, Bubbles stops reading at a certain point. So my infection in my leg got worse, and I'm being referred to a cardiologist as I'm having issues with my heart with irregular heartbeats and uh, atrial fib. Wow. Terry, so sorry. I mean, tiny tip, so nothing hurts. But uh, thank you so much. I mean, we're going to take it slow. Uh, oh, Terry says it ran out of space to type. We're going to take it s slow, try to rest. And, well, all I can do from here is uh, tell you, you know, um, I can deliver the entertainment. But unfortunately, I cannot heal from a distance. But, oh, look at her. Well, well, I never. Is that Sharon Stone? Yes, it is. <laughs> Bubbles pop a cherry for Terry. Let her heal. There you go. I was like, where is ah oh, the power? The power MC, the power compels you, right? Yes, Terry. There you go. Get wet, get wet, get better soon. I wanted to say get well and get better soon at the same time. Ciao. Um just one Titus. How's it going, sweetie? The Nectarine Man. Been invited to my first Reese this week. Stoked, but then price is cha Reese? What, a Reese, what does that mean? Like, uh, my husband and I love your channel. Thank you, Just One Titus. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Hi to the hubby as well. Lil Starshine says, let her heal. Yes, Val says, sending lots of love, Terry. Thanks, guys, says Terry. Just Joe says, damn, she looks great. Yeah, Sharon Stone. I mean, like, she's like, you know, close to her 70s. She, she looks like, oh, okay. I guess she's auditioning for the new Wednesday. <laughs> I, mm -hmm. <laughs> I love when they do the when they open the mouth like like they've been, you know. <clears throat> sucking on something for decades and now they got the loose jaw very fashionable darling i y k y k uh, the next ring man says reese is when you go to see oh the piece of a runway show up close and private in the expectation of making a pre-order it was oh for tom brown oh congratulations nectarine man sounds like fun yes hey side guys hello ladies and gentlemen just got here oh what did i miss oh nothing we're just filling up you know, we're about to review the Tom Ford show. Hey, Crybaby Zagi. Hey, Kristen Penta. Oh, my God. It's like a shark unhinging its jaw. Exactly, honey. I-Y-K-Y-K. -Y -K. That's what the fashion world is for. Oh, sunglasses. Yes, Quinn. Okay, purple and pink on darker skin tones is always the best thing in the world. Adore it, especially pink. And I never stress enough to repeat... Grace Jones with pink blush and pink lipstick is, is, it's, I mean, divine, like divine, divine, really. So the Coca-Cola Joss is Krabi Buzagi. Uh, the crass things I could say about Jaws opening in fashion, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the type that, that kind of wants to be like, yeah, I'm a dude, I'm straight, okay? Just to be very clear, like, I'm kind of annoyed to be here, but uh, do you want me to pose like that? Should I turn? Yeah? Should I show? Yeah? Should I pull my wiener out? Yeah? No? Okay, like that? Yeah? 
Okay, find me on OnlyFans. No, I, I meant no, no. <laughs> You're good, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. real dude. Yeah, no, mask for mask. Love that you're hiding the balding spot. It does wonders. Real dude. Uh, okay, you're welcome. Okay, yeah. Bye. Okay, bye. So, um, <clears throat> oh my God. This is why I'm never invited to these shows. You see? Now you know why. Because I am so ratchet. They would kick me out, honey, before I would even step one foot into... Oh, wait a minute. Weren't you supposed... It Was that dragon? Wasn't he supposed to go to Chanel? <laughs> hmm. Look at all the fashion peeps. I'm, oh yeah. Oh hi. Oh my god. Um, you here, girl? How oh, was it at the other show? Are you invited to the after party? You're not. So sorry. Well, I am. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Let me. Okay, girl. You did it, girl. Mask for mask. Ghostface for Michael Myers. This is Tyler. Everyone needs a comb there, right? Okay. Mm, okay, so this one just used the jaw. Those ridiculous glasses. This is this is where the the clothes wear you. And when you're no longer wearing them, it's just become so obvious at a certain point. You know what I mean? <clears throat> So anyway, it's all filling up. I wonder, it's, it's, it's the strong jawline for me. But he is handsome. Who is coming that needs that spotlight there? I don't know. I can't see. Somebody right there. Somebody. Who are they illuminating? Some private person. Oh, well, honey, if I can't see you, you don't exist. Oh! Yes, a sister. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, no. She popped in and she popped out. And uh, the, um, okay, here we go. All right, another one trying to prove their mask for maskness. Um, <laughs> and Tyler's like, bye. <laughs> okay. Oh my God, why are they all like, I can't, where, where am I supposed to? Uh, you know what? Yes, yes, a ginger snapper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, girl, yeah, lippy matches the hair and the bush. We love it. You go, queen. You deliver, you deliver the pride of the gingers into the world. You know, a couple hundred years ago, they would have burned you at the stake because they would have labeled you a witch. But today, you rule the world. You rule the world. Ginger forever. Fabulous. Oh, this is going to be a show. Let me tell you, Tom Ford, and he's not even there. <laughs> Corey K, what do you mean that's about? Ah. <laughs> duck lip, duck face. Oh, look at that. Yes, the go dripping in gold, honey. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Sure. It's going to be a very tight catwalk. <laughs> ah, these glasses, they're so ugly. I love how everybody's trying to rock the glasses and nobody can. Hey, Selena, how's it going? The ginger's contouring was horrid, says Corey. Oh, Corey, don't be so rough on them. <laughs> Accidental hair. There you go. Okay. So that was fabulous. Oh my, you see what I mean? It's like, girl, fash, the fashion world. Gloria says, I recognize no one. <laughs> Tyler says, the amount of jaundice uh, uh, color lens glass. Okay. Yeah. Greasy Bayang. What's the greasy Bayang? Oh, Kev says, is that Nikita Dragoon? Was that Nikita? No. If that was, I don't think that was Nikita. Mm-mm. Maybe it was Nikita. I didn't recognize her, though. Ah, the poverty. Beavis and Butthead, ladies and gentlemen. They made it. They're invited to talk. Yes! Quit. I'm Butthead, you're Beavis, or the opposite, whatever. 
And Corey says, Nikita is not there. She's in jail. Chop. Now, hey, KDF. Douche. Beavis. Our title is like Beavis. Who this? The poverty dick. Katie, listen. <laughs> Do I... Oh, wait, hon. I mean, we're... <laughs> okay. So, totally serving uh, Zoolander. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait it's about to begin all right well hey holy grace i love tom ford he's fab well he's not there because he's not designing anymore but uh so um kev is like is tamara gonna show up maybe they used her as the carpet i don't know so anyway let's uh <laughs> who i mean queen queen oh i mean why not it's giving me kind of like a rehashed version of um, the fifth element with the hair, you know, and the glasses. Kind of, kind of giving me a little bit fifth element vibes. Selena says, Tom Ford is, no, 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 he's alive. He just, you know, retired. She's at the wrong show. She's like, so where, when is Phoebe Philo uh, coming out? <laughs> oh my God, why, are, why am I never. Oh, this is so irritating. I don't know how to do this. Okay. Uh, she's like, so uh, I'm at the... Hi, Phoebe. Love you. Low. No, honey, this is the Tom Ford show, not Phoebe Philo. Okay. She's only doing her stuff online. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's basically our pre-show. Now, I think we can jump into the... I mean, actually, it's, these things are way more interesting than the actual collections. You know what I mean? But then again... We could uh, just jump into the show. Uh, kind of live for her black dress, though. Well, you know, Ty, it, the black dresses are always amazing because, you know, you can't really go wrong, really, when you're in the fashion world and you, you kind of like say, you know what, let me just go for, the, for, for black and that's that. Cabbage Patch Attack. Let's dress black. Oh, she's like, coochie itching. <laughs> but I can't cry. I know, right? <laughs> She's like, oh yeah, you did it, girl. Yeah, she's like, oh, right, right down there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Letty. How's it going? Hi, Louis. Jacob, how did you choose what shows to review? Well, that's a good question. I chose the ones that are the most intriguing and the most kind of maybe controversial or just dumb. <laughs> Really, because it's and because honey, um, cat scratch, right? Ty, this is the thing. Uh, to me, fashion is dead. So might as well pick the shows where at least we have something, you know, fun to have some fun. And uh, because fashion should be fun, we keep forgetting that fashion should. All of these people posing here, dead serious. They're forget. They're forgetting that fashion should be fun. They're taking themselves way too seriously. Corey says, none of them have facial expressions anymore. That forehead was stretched tight, says Corey. Well, there you go. So that's all I'm saying, you know. So, and also, you know, again, <clears throat> just to be very clear, I really could not care less for where the people come from, the skin color, really. I roast everybody, okay? And... When somebody's fabulous, they are fabulous. But I'm saying this because just a couple of uh, weeks ago, or actually last week, somebody found uh, one of my older videos where, do you remember uh, who was, uh, there was this one uh, Asian model, she was running for, what was the fashion brand? And this guy, I forget, forget his name, and he basically, what he did was he uh, retouched her the photos of her on the runway. He took her head off and put a Caucasian head on. I mean, we're talking, it was <clears throat> terrible. Okay, Katie says, I remember. Right, so, and I raised awareness about this, and, you know, I, I mentioned, you can go check that video. All the names are listed, the name of the model, the name of the designer, what happened of, anyway, you can go check out that video. So somebody, just a couple of days ago, commented on that video and said, oh, yeah, nice that you're defending the, the Asian model, but I bet you would have never done that for a black model, you racist. I swear to God, mankind has come to the brink and it's game over, you guys, because I, 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 seriously, you, yeah, Tina, yes, 
Tina's like, what? Vel is like, so it's like, you, you can't do anything right anymore, you, you know? So, <laughs> so raising awareness about literally changing the identity of one of the models on the runway offended somebody because... I guess because the model was not black, but it was an Asian model and a Caucasian face was plastered oh, instead of her real face. But how dare I make a video about that? Uh, because I should have made a video about a black model. But I'm like, well, then show me the example of when that happened and we're going to raise awareness about it. It's insane, you guys. That's what I'm like saying. Like, I really... Was it Michael Costello, Nectarine Man? Was it the Michael Costello show? Rhea Hurtari says the model was Shireen Wu. So, so like, hey, Mr. Puppy, how's it going? Uh, right, KDB, because of a hypothetical situation. Ah, oh, thanks, Mr. Puppy. Jacob, you look great. It's been a while. So glad I caught a live. So anyway, I'm like, uh, okay. So, you know, like it's insane. But, it, you know, it is what it is. <clears throat> election year and what have you let's let's <laughs> honey they're all coming out of the woodwork this is going to be a doozy of a year let me just tell you at least you know for all the people watching from the united states girl no yeah no mm -mm. like this is giving me like major you know tom ford for gucci vibes you know what i mean with tom ford glasses but the, the, the glasses are not working in anyone's favor Katie's like, I love those glasses. Well, if you can pull them off, honey. Anyway. Awoke Mannix says Sean Sway. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> yes, Quinns. Uh, they were never detached at birth. They still walk together, attached by the hips. So anyway, let's go. Um, <laughs> let's go. There you go. All right, you guys, let's do the, the, the show, uh, the review of the show. The show is Tom Ford Fall Winter 24 by Peter Hawkins. Not Hawkins from Stranger Thuns, but Peter Hawkins. Uh, still possibly Stranger. What is this? Why do I have all this? Hold on, you guys. Let me just... Do my makeup. Um, are those the Beatles? Whatever's left of them. <laughs> um. <clears throat> okay. What? 71 likes. Come on, you guys. Let's get to 100 likes. <sighs> or are you all going to throw me under the bus here? Okay. Hi, SPF. SD is cut is giving. You know, I can't, but I still wear them since Katie B. The glasses. Hmm. Letty says, this show was such a copy-paste vibe from Tom Ford for Gucci from the late 90s and early 2000s. And uh, Akrimi says, why, oh, why do they have to do a little pose? Can't they just, like, find their seat and sit they ass down? Uh, boy band ordered on Wish? Yeah, very Xian. Okay. Um, okay, let's do this. Are you ready for Tom Ford? Fall winner? I think it's fall winner 24. Uh, no, not in the middle? I'm not in the middle, you guys. Hey, Paige, how's it going? Oh, hold on, my the Karen. Where? What is the middle? Is this the middle? Damn, it's like nothing is working. <clears throat> okay. All right, let's hit it. Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Today we're going to review the Tom Ford Fall Winter 2024 show. Taken from their YouTube channel, so it falls under fair use. We just switched the music to copyright free music. Uh, the artistic director is Peter Hawkins because, you know, Tom Ford is not designing himself anymore. The lady retire, darling. So, uh, everything I say in this video is for entertainment purposes only, not rooted in truths or facts. Everything's a legend, just my opinion. You can subscribe to my channel, push the join button next to the subscription button, become a member today. <sighs> Gain access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Deco, all spelled together there as well for extra perks. This video is being filmed live in front of a live virtual audience. I live stream several times a week, so come join the fun. 
All right. So we are Milan Fashion Week, darling. <clears throat> Come on, Tom Ford. Let's see what you got for us. Oh, lights, darling. Action. There's like a little carpet moment going on there. So PETA. PETA from Family Guy is the artistic de designer for Tom Ford. No, not, obviously, but, uh, you know. Anyway, so let's see. So everybody's seated. Oh, spotlight styling, little tiny dots, tiny dots. No, take them away, no dots. They've changed their mind. They do not want the light dots after all. Okay, maybe they, all right. No, they don't want those dots either. So let's just illuminate the whole thing. No, you know what, no. <laughs> Have you made up your mind? No, we don't even want a strip of okay, eleganza, says Gloria. <clears throat> Eyes test vibes, says Selena. So, all right, now that everybody got uh, basically a stroke, is this a light show or a fashion show, asks Paige D. Uh, well, I don't know. It's like, okay, I guess they're still not really sure what lights they want for this runway. And uh, But while they're deciding, they're like, you know what, just like walk. Okay, and here we go. We'll go, we'll go. Oh, the bumpy, jumpy hair. It's a vibe. Okay, walking fast. So the directions were be very confident. Walk as if whoever is in your path shall be overturned and overrun. You know, it kind of brings to mind uh, Lord of the Rings where, uh, what's his name? Gandalf the Grey said, you shall not pass. <laughs> not if the monster is one of these models because of them gonna go, go, go. They're gonna pass. Kev says they're trying to blind the audience so they won't be able to focus on the clothes. Oh snap, the shade has been delivered and thrown. I'm not gonna lie, these buttons are giving me Belmont vibes. Not in a good way. So is, did, did Rustig have an affair with Pita? Huh? Did Olivier and Pina have a little little satin, satin backstage and now Olivier's clothes are kind of on the runway for a Belmont Ford? I don't know. Am I feeling this vibe? Not particularly. I mean, for a fall winter collection, sure, you got a little petticoat, a little coat, little coat lets stay warm. With, but it's the buttons for me. It's the two row buttons and the single row buttons and heavy gold. It's giving me new empire vibes. And I just uh, really do we have to do this kind of <clears throat> conquering the world? It's very aggressive. You know, oh, here we got the alligators, crocodiles, or faux alligators, faux crocodiles. Oh, honey, those cheekbones. Yes. Yes, like a hamster. Like a hamster. You gotta, you gotta ration that food. The entire week is in the two cheeks. Oh, can't wait for people to come for me for that. So, oh, okay, another little <clears throat> exotic uh, belt. Okay, she's about to kind of go off the runway. We need carbs. We got a model that's about to kind of go off the rails. Great, now we're into the camel tones, the beigey tones. Yes, it's giving us a little bit of Tom Ford for Gucci, you know. A little bit Y2K, Y2K is there. Uh, Holy Grace says it's giving YSL and Balmain. <clears throat> You know, I mean, yeah, th this is the type of vibe. It's the glasses for me, and it's the glasses that make it very Tom Ford. But then again, these glasses also really barely fit anyone. They just look ridiculous on people. I'm, I'm never one with oh, the length of this coat with the belt, terrible. I never want to shy away from a cool shoulder pad, you know? I'm, I'm fine with bringing back the shoulder pad. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm fine with this, like the bigger the shoulder pad, the more 80s, the better. Why not? Look at this. But I feel like if you're gonna do a shoulder pad, you need a little bit more opulence there. We need a little bit more accessories. We need a little bit more color that's not just this, washed bleached champagne Th this is yeah i know what they were going for but honey sex in the city carrie bradshaw late 90s early 2000s that vibe is over we have to evolve we have to move on all of this looks very dusty it looks like a watered down version of tom ford what he used to do in the early 2000s and now it's like how are we moving this brand forward how are we going into the future with this I'm only seeing a look into the past, but not really bringing the archive pieces fully out and making it like, oh yes, it's a moment. I feel like, oh, 
Okay, this is kind of like the TJ Maxx version of Tom Ford, style-wise. I'm not talking about the quality, because we can't talk about the quality. I haven't touched the pieces. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, it makes me kind of miss the real Tom Ford from, you know, decades ago. So it makes me kind of want to hunt down the vintage pieces, but it doesn't make me want to buy the new ones. You know what I mean? La Jota says, it looks like Macy's for Tom Ford. Oh, the shade. Well, I'm just saying. The Nectarine Man says, it's giving Massimo Dutti. Nice, but meh. Mm. Holly says, okay, it's sleek, but there's no progress No progress as the runway continues. All the same. Seju Michil says, it's too dark. How are we going to see the details? Katie says, I think this is a bit sad. SPFSD says, feels like Frida Gucci trying to do Tom Ford. Trying to do Tom Gucci, sorry. Frida Gucci trying to do Tom Gucci. Rhea says, those walks. Oof, OMG, nothing new yet, says Kimberly. <clears throat> oh, okay, she's like, look at me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's ready. She's rehearsed. She thinks she's auditioning for the remake of Flashdance. Hmm. Okay, living for the hair. Ah, oh, and the face. Okay. She was really hot. She was gorgeous the mom. Yeah, no. Mm -mm, no, 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 girl. No, no, no. And these, like, when are we going to kind of finally bring back, like, more fun models that have fun on the runway that don't look like, you know, you know, that, that don't look like uh, Megamind uh, meets, I don't know, had uh, children with uh, aliens from 20 planets away i don't know hmm. interesting semi sheer texture i wonder what material this is i mean it could be plastic what is it a silk what is that thing that's an interesting that material was interesting to see probably not so comfortable to oh oh oh, oh she did that wait <laughs> oh she did that she did that with the look at her go oh yes girl you did <laughs> Ba bam, ba bam. Oh, she's profesh. Did you see how she swung that chenille, darling? Mm -hmm. Yes, she did. Yeah, the little kind of. Oh, look at these little Fendi baguettes. I mean, Tom Ford baguettes. One thing this show did achieve, however, it, it makes me want to watch Sex in the City all over again. Oh, look at Samantha Jones, you know? It does make me want to... Oh, I like that lilac color. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Fendi baguettes aside, and the little vests and the gilets. Where's the little uh, lilac -y moment? Oh, boy. It, he walks like he pooped himself. Girl, seriously. Uh, there. Oh, okay. There, 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 there. Cha. Okay, she's like... She has to go to the bathroom, like, ASAP. But behind her... Come on. Okay. There. That looks different now. The color isn't that lilac -y anymore. Oh. Okay, no, that's not the color. No. Mm -mm. No, I was hoping for something more light textured, like lilac -y pink, you know? Yeah, this isn't the color. All of these colors are giving me H&M, Zara. Those bracelets are giving me, like, Zara accessories. This dress is, like, a classic thing. Ah, there, this thing. Love this color. Okay, this is... This is a lilac-y color I, I'm down with. Yeah. I like this one. This is a good color. You know. It, it's, it's kind of like a champagne lilac-y pink. Really cute. More intense purple. It kind of stabs you in the eye. After all the other kind of absence of colors and absence of saturation. Um, I was never really a fan of very, very short sleeves on kind of velvety jackets like the guy just wore makes it always look too small and too tight. Oh, another um, fifth element moment with that cut out part in the back. Purple again looks beautiful. The drapery looks beautiful on darker skins. Not very, purple doesn't always, you know, usually doesn't work on, on lighter skin tones. Um, yeah, no, too stiff, honey. Mm -mm. Okay, uh, <clears throat> now, red carpet look i'm sure that tom ford is going to try the brand is going to try to get that those particular pieces on this upcoming upcoming um 
awards ceremony season, you know what I mean? Like the Oscars or what have you. Keep an eye out for that particular, not this dress, that longer one with the big cutout in the front. This one. This one might, this one, we might be seeing that dress. This is Versace, like hello, 90s. We might be seeing that long dress on some award ceremony red carpet. The navy croc suit though, the lilac suit are decent as page D. Corey says, I love purple on a very fair ginger. Yeah, the clutches are not really giving me... Oh, the little sequin top. Wait, wow, okay. The, this combination is kind of bizarre. Like, can you imagine what sort of body you gotta have to be able to pull off these, like, overalls? Yeah, this thing. This dress. Red carpet ready. And she's been modeling for Chanel and all the big names. So you know if they gave that dress to her, I forgot her name, you know it's an important dress for them because she's been kind of one of the top models this past few seasons. So they're gonna give their kind of key dress to her, right? And here, here's one for J-Lo. She loves her slits on the side. You know, J-Lo after um, her movie flopped. That's a whole other can of worms and a conversation for another day. Um, yeah, okay, so you see, this this is for some music award ceremony if you're gonna have like an overall jumpsuit tight like you gotta have that like dancer body otherwise forget about it I mean, like, could you imagine i mean why not you know i could see meryl streep in it she would perform you know what i mean she would be a character but uh you know what i mean like no <laughs> you know and uh <clears throat> grace jones this is a total grace jones vibe she would so pull that off still today so, uh, in all in all, love the variety of skin textures and skin tones that we've seen on this runway. Beautiful. That's cool for them. However, uh, there's no denying that there was total absence of body shapes. So there was no models that were, you know, an ounce <laughs> healthier looking uh, than these models were. And here we go again with the stroboscopic lights. Are we gonna get to see PETA? Is PETA gonna come out to say thank y'all? No, okay, we're gonna have a total uh, view of all of them. And Kev says in the chat, clothes entirely forgettable. Nat says Broadway vibes. <clears throat> mm, Nat says I can imagine Natalie Portman in, in that uh, dress with the slit on the side. So here we have a total look, one final view, all the coats and uh, jacquettes uh, in the navy and the black. And then we got all those camely pastels following right after that. And then we slowly, I mean, it's a lot of pieces, y'all. It's maybe a little bit too big of a collection, you know? It's like when you, you know, it's like when you go to a restaurant and the menu, look at this. The menu is like too big, too many plates on the menu. Why do you need 50 different coats, the same coat with a slight variation of a lapel here, lapel there? No, it's like the same like in a restaurant. You're offering me too many dishes. I know the restaurant ain't good. Reduce, edit, tone it down. Give me less, but better. Zoom better. Zoom less, zoom better. Because this is a little bit, you know, much. It's almost like mass produced. That's why I mentioned earlier, giving me TJ Maxx vibes, you know, office wear. It says, gosh, get a life. Mm. Clones! Polly Grace is like, clones, I tell ya. Just Joe says, meh. Very New York Fashion Week on a budget, says Kev. Paige says, if the navy croc skirt suit is less than 10K, fine. Otherwise, most of the items are definitely not worth what they will retail for. And you know that Tom Ford costs a pretty penny. And also, their perfumes, coincidentally, are way overpriced, in my humble opinion. Tom Ford perfumes? Oof. No, not gonna happen. Not for me, at least. But anyway, everything I say in this video is for entertainment purposes only, not rooted in truth or facts. Everything's a legend, just my ratchet opinion. So, you know... Take take from it what you met. Cha, he looked into the camera. He still didn't manage to go to the loo, did he? He's still very stiff. Uh, seriously, plus the price point. Who's buying this? Asks Josias. Avatar says wearable but not interesting or unique. Hmm. Where is the edit? Asks Holy Grace. It's a lot. It's a lot, you guys. We don't need all these pieces. Now, sometimes what happens is, sometimes what happens is these, you know, uh, collections for... Milan Fashion Week, you know, Preta Pote. They're made, like, they make a lot of pieces on the runway, and then they wait to see which buyers come into the showroom, which pieces are bought the most. And some of these pieces 
are as inspiration on the runway, but they might not go into production. It all depends if they meet the minimum quota necessary orders to be produced. So PETA! Hi, PETA. Okay, there you go. This is PETA Hawkins. Oh, Peter trying to look like Steve Jobs meets Tom Ford? Descending from heaven? I'm looking at the bulge. I can't help look at the bulge because... Yeah, it was very... Well, anyway. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, but... Uh, <laughs> it kind of... It folds and, and flaps. R r look, I'm sorry, but the camera, I mean, I can't help it. Sha Debbie says, I'm looking too. Now it says me too. <laughs> well, at least we got one look uh, by, by the end of the show. Um, you know, just saying. I mean, hey, thank you, PETA. Kev says, the socks. Mark Zuckerberg, I was like, guys, I don't know. Who made the pattern for those pants? They were not cut well, says Corey. Well, they were cut well enough, honey. <laughs> I don't know if he was cut, huh? What? And I'm in Queen. Stop. But yeah, Kev has doubts. They might have been stuffed. Teresa McGuire says, eyes drawn right to it. There you go. You can always count on Terry to keep it real. <laughs> I mean, it's either bad tailoring, says Emotion Engine, or he's hung like a horse. Maybe now we know why Tom Ford hired him. Look it up, as Madonna would say. <laughs> Can somebody Google Peter Hawkins? Like, does he have any, like, does he have a past? You know what I mean? Like, does he have a past? Like that type of past because we'll go we'll go i mean i wouldn't mind you know peeking if there is a picture if there's a picture a, a picture out there from his past you know everybody makes mistakes online sooner or later honey <laughs> anyway that was the tom ford fall winner 24 collection if you liked it or not you know, let a hoe know down below. Oh, a little rhyme. Uh, and uh, yeah, subscribe to my channel. Thumb up this video, honey. If you cannot laugh about fashion, what are you doing in this world, in this life? You know, don't take it too seriously. Enjoy, okay? And long live the bulge. Subscribe. Go, we'll go, we'll go. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Puppy! Mr. Puppy donated $20. Glad to see you. You look fabulous as always. Thank you, my love. Thank you so much. Mr. Puppy gave us a $20, $20 for the bulge. Hit it, Bubbles. Oh, the fabulosity. Well, Sage says nothing new for the collection. No. Mm -mm. I agree with you. And now we're moving on to, uh, well, let's just put it this way. Sugar! <laughs> oh, Bubbles. Bubbles is hoping we're going to review Chanel today. No, but wait, is this? really difficult to maintain okay let's hope it doesn't fall off we're gonna review moschino next wait oh, oh my gosh okay we're gonna review the moschino fall winter 20 uh 24 i'm moving very slowly because this is an archival piece so i i don't want it to fall off um <laughs> mosquito emotion engine yes and of course you know since uh, literally mosquitoes i mean it's like these uh mosquito designers keep falling like flies literally so you know iykyk okay let's let's zoom it oh wait 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 wait, wait. Let me prepare. Yes, I know. I know. I know. Come on. We still don't have 100 likes. You guys. It literally costs you nothing to thumb up the live stream. Seriously. 99 likes. 
100 likes, okay. Well, at least something. It took you an hour. Thumb up the live stream, you guys. Come on. It means the world to the channel. Uh, because, you know, the algorithm sucks. So the only way to, to help out the channel is by literally thumbing up. Hey, Don Donuts. Thank you for, for thumbing up. Thank you, guys. Mahones. Hi, Mahones. Kaleki. Hi, Five Foot Nothing. How's it going? Hey, Zara Justina. Hi, Jacob. I have a burning question for in-between segments. Okay, ask quickly. Because we're about to jump into the Moshino. I can do my lippy while you're typing away. We're waiting for Zara's question. I'm just going to... What do you think of Adidas selling new Yeezys? Are they selling them again? Well, Ad oh. so I mean, Adidas, you know, they don't, they haven't really shown much spine in the past decades. Okay, they get scared easily, and they they don't show much character. They're very spineless when it comes to these things. And if people throw shade at them, if the people that throw shade at them are very famous. They let them, and then they go back working with them. I mean, that's Adidas for you, you know. And uh, but I still love them, you know. Uh, they're launching the new Yeezys Boost. So with Kanye, or is 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 that is it something that they have like the rights on? Like they they still have the rights to to release some pieces before like their contract with him is completely expired, or is this a brand new contract? Like, what is it? Is it like something that he's going to get money off of? Or is it, or do they have, yeah, I don't know. I'm asking, wait. Without him, he spoke up against it. Okay, so they're doing this without him. Then they have probably legal rights to, to launch this particular shoe. Well, I would say in this case, if he's not involved at all, you know, I would say, Kanye, be careful what you sign, what sort of contracts. I don't know what sort of contract Kanye signed with Adidas, but if he signed some form of contract where they're allowed to use the word Yeezy Boost 350, even without him, what are you going to do? I mean, listen, same same goes with my movie, Art Lovers Unite with Vivian Westwood. So uh, many people... Uh, so many distribution houses, so many agents wanted to F us over real bad. Patrick and, and, and me, we did the movie together. Um, like so many contracts were sent over our way with the worst conditions for us like ripoff, scam conditions. So you got to be very, very careful what sort of contracts you're signing in general. Sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. Very sneaky. So be careful. You know, I don't know, you know, I mean, how much we can be on the side of uh, Kanye West, because I mean, you know, when he joined forces with Adidas, he was already famous and rich, meaning when he joined forces with Adidas already back then, early 2014, he could have already, you know, afforded a really good team of lawyers to look through the contracts. There's no excuse for him. It's not like he was a nobody with no money and he got, you know, somebody messed with him, a big brand messed with him because he didn't know any better. He knew better, okay? He was already huge when he made a deal with them. So in a way, it's like, who's to blame here? I mean, if you signed off a contract of a certain type, despite the fact that you had enough money to get the best lawyers involved, that's on you, honey boo boo cha. There's no excuse. There's no excuse. You know what I mean? Anyway. So Zara said, without him, he spoke up against it. Oshidi says, oh, Adidas is always a disappointment. They are even more boring than Zara, says Oshidi. Josiah says, I don't think they will sell. Hi, Sheik Mavs are going. Zara says, I hope they don't sell. It seems wrong to release his sneaker design if they said they don't want to be affiliated with him any longer. That is also a really good point you're making, Zara. I mean, I will not be buying 
if that's what you wanted to know. I, I will not be buying. But then again, I also won't be buying his own socklets. I, I don't like those little socklets, Nicolettes, that he's doing. So I won't be buying any of it, really. Rhea says, Adidas is just selling another stock back from 2022, says Rhea. Well, whatever they're doing, you know. Rhea says, this is now the liquidation of the remnant stock. Okay, so, like, rather than destroying them, which by European law, they're not allowed to destroy stock anymore. They're like, okay, let's try to sell it. <sighs> like, to, to get rid of whatever leftover stock is there. I see. Well, for the sake of the environment, I hope that they find a new home so that this plastic that they produced is not going to end up in some landfill. For the sake of the environment, okay? But morally, way too complicated. Zara says donate them. They could do that. Huh. What company wants to donate something? They don't want to lose money. You know what I mean? So anyway, there, there's that. I'm not going to be getting any of them. I do not care for any of them. Uh, they were kind of cutesy back in 2015, 16, 7. You know what I mean? Like back in the day. Like nine, eight, seven years ago. Now it's kind of not interesting anymore to me, you know. Been there, done that type of vibe. You know what I mean? But Adidas did do some amazing collaborations. I love what Adidas did with Rick Owens. You know, in the 2015, 16, 17, 18 era. The Rick Owens collab was great. The Raph Simmons. Oh, the Raph Simmons uh, collaboration with, uh, uh, with Adidas was also amazing. So... Like, what are you going to do? You know, it all depends <clears throat> what you're into. So they've done some great collaborations, in my opinion. But, yeah, to each their own. All right. There you go. You know, maybe when there's um, a mid-2010s revival, but that won't be for a while. It's still too soon. Yeah, possibly. So there's that. Uh, Sylvia says he's probably the worst kind of client, one who doesn't listen to. Sylvie, yes, uh, allegedly. Um, very complicated. Very complicated. What, you know, what you guys don't know is that he made Adidas also lose a ton of money while he was trying to figure out his fashion collection. And they only did one with Adidas. Ask yourself why. Because he... The samples were made and then he was like no I don't like it let's do it all over and I changed my mind about this like he just thought money was endless like Adidas is just going to keep pumping money into the collection no matter how many times like very unprofessional in my humble opinion the way he behaved so no wonder why they only did one clothing collection with him so you know what I mean be careful here there's always two sides to the story you know I'm not completely uh, and either one of the two sides, I have my beef with Adidas, but I also have my beef with Kanye, uh, when it comes to being unprofessional in these, in these cases, he could have also been a little bit, uh, more professional, a little bit more, you know what I mean? Hey, Alvaro, how's it going, sweetie? I made it to live streaming. Saludos. Hola, que tal? Ah, La Jota, yes, Y3 is amazing. Adidas does Y3. Adidas does beautiful stuff. Yoshi Yamamoto and Adidas do great stuff together. So Adidas has some wonderful... They also do Stella McCartney, you know? Like Adidas by Stella McCartney, which is also fascinating, uh, revolutionary in many ways. The materials they're using because Stella McCartney is vegan. So they experiment with new textiles for her collection. So Adidas, you know, don't throw too much shade in their direction, you know? They might be a little bit spineless when it comes to certain decisions, but they also have some interesting creative people working there that actually do have a vision. It's just that the higher ups need to allow them to actually create that vision and turn it into a physical collection. You know what I mean? So that's that. Why yikes, Debbie? What, what, what did I say? What happened? Did you step on a Lego, Debbie? Did you step on a Lego brick? No? All right. So anyway, uh, let's do the Moschino show. I hope my earring is not going to fall off again. Oh, well, whatever. Probably will. That just slides off. 
Yeah, and it was never meant to be worn, I, I suppose. <laughs> okay. Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. We are dressed in a Moschino because... We are going to review the Moschino Fall Winter 2024 show. Jeremy Scott has left the building a while ago. And then David Rene was supposed to take over. But then unfortunately, David Rene, just after a couple of days or weeks of working for Moschino, unfortunately, you know, left the planet. Uh, how else to say it uh, in a YouTube video? Was unalived, okay? Not was, but just, you know, the life was gone. Unfortunately, may he rest in peace. And then it took several months for the Moschino higher-ups or AF to figure out, well, who's going to take over? And the person taking over, I forget the name, Adrian Apiolaza, Apiolaza, or Apiolaza, pronunciation. Well, if he's Italian, Apiolaza, Apiolaza. But Adrian, Adriano would be the Italian name. So I'm not so sure where he's from. He has a little dog. So anyway, he comes out at the end of the show. Uh, and which, what we're about to see. I'm not so sure if he designed the whole show or if kind of he stepped in halfway through the creative team designing it. So maybe it was a collaborative effort just for this collection until the next season. He does the show all on his own. Doesn't matter. We're going to watch it regardless. I got my little Jeremy Scott moment going on. Jeremy Scott clutch for Moschino and uh, Jeremy Scott for Moschino uh, fall winter 2014 the first collection he did you know the McDonald's collection and the Cheetos so the earring the clip-on is from that collection and then we got from the Barbie collection 2015 spring summer we got the Moschino uh, crew neck and cotton darling so the video is from the Moschino YouTube channel, so it falls under fair use because we will be reviewing it. However, the music has been changed to copyright-free music. Let's watch it together. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Uh, I'm uh, filming this video live in front of a live virtual audience. Hi to my co chatters and everything I say in this video is for entertainment purposes only, not rooted in truths or facts. Everything's a legend, just my opinion. Hit it. Moschino, women's show. Fall, winter, 2020, fall. And she's going shopping, you know. She's go So we got the trench coat with the red... I kind of love the combo of the red 80s heel with the trench coat. And all of these uh, vegetables and baguettes that you see are actual bags. And uh, I have seen on Instagram people kind of receiving them as goodies and they kind of are opening up the veggies and the baguettes and they are actually bags. Just like, you know, this... A hair dryer is is also a bag so there you have it there, there's that so you, you can take out everything from the bag and it's a bag in a bag moment uh the cuffs are kind of interesting the jacket no the jacket is very bland but i guess they're trying to also reconnect to more bland audience oh wow okay we're that was nice hold on a minute because those shoulders on that knitwear piece with the franco moschino cowboy hat interesting Oh, we have a different type of oversized stuff going on here, I see. Wow. Okay, very, very 90s Moschino. And then <laughs> the Depression. What was that about? A little bit Vivian Westwood vibes going on there. You know what? This knitwear is not bad. I don't like this shade of, of purple lilac that doesn't... It, it bleaches out everything. Oh, the tie in the sky is a dress. Oh my god, you know, 80s in a good way redone. Oh, shirt as a headband. You know what? Okay. Yes, archival pieces, very toned down, like wearable. Okay, oversized. Yeah, I mean, it's nothing we haven't seen before, but... I, I don't mind this kind of subtle whimsy, you guys. Oh, look, older model, fabulous. Good, good, good. Now I also want to see a rounder model, you know, and we want to see all skin tones represented as well you know otherwise the headgear is going to be quite cultural appropriation won't it? oh i love the old school print with the white and and the and the brown skin you know holding hands oh that's very franco moschino cute this is giving me really kind of political vibes now you guys 
for those of you who don't know, you know, Franco Moschino was very political. I mean, he, he, he used fashion to also make very clear political statements. He was, you know, he, I mean, he was, he was homosexual and he actually passed of, of HIV and AIDS complications due to HIV and AIDS in the early nineties. But, um, he was fighting against racism. He was fighting against all sorts of discrimination. The guy was just wonderful, okay? So he was a visionary, but also very political, very kind of, you know, Vivian Westwood in that respect because he would have slogans and, and stuff printed on shirts. Oh, she's beautiful. I really like her face. So, and this is something I was personally missing a lot from Jeremy Scott's Moschino. He was not political or minimally political. Oh, the ginger, the ginger person was also the Tom Ford show. But uh, that baguette is actually a baguette. It's a, it's a bag uh, and not just a piece of bread. Um, so what I was kind of missing from Jeremy's Moschino was that political engagement. I mean, you know, Jeremy's American, very pop culture oriented, very la-di-da. And I'm really hoping to see more slogans, activism. You know, Franco Moschino was an activist. That's something that I would really, really welcome especially in today's climate in in the new Moschino era. So it's something that I'm looking forward to. Let's see if, if that's going to be delivered. The classic Franco Moschino blue uh, sky with the white clouds on this track. It is, you see, I'm liking this collection, you know, in, in parts. It's it's very different from, from, uh, oh, is it over already? Oh, okay, that was short. Well, there you go. That was a very tiny collection, but to the point, giving us... Oh, I love this sweater. It's that sweater for me with those shoulders falling off. Oof. That knit sweater is calling my name. Um, tight, to the point, not over the top. It's giving a clear statement. This is Moschino. I'm referencing the archives. We can get more political. This is just kind of a first kind of... I'm entering Moschino. Let's see what I can do next. But it is a clear, clear distancing from what Jeremy Scott did. Oh, there he is with his little dog. Oh, he, oh, he tiny. Oh, he, he tiny. He very tiny. That's Adrian. Oh, he tiny, cute, tiny little queen, tiny queen. We love a tiny queen. I, I loved this show. I'm not gonna lie. This was cute. This is something I'm, I'm, I'm here for this. I'm here for this. I'm here for this compact collections, more to the point, make it very clear, and I am welcoming more activism. I think Moschino, the brand, would benefit from a return to Franco's roots in delivering, you know, more of that political statement, engagement, making the world a better place, because the fashion industry is the most polluting after the war industry and the military weapon industry. After the weapon industry, it's the most polluting industry we have on the planet, you know? So if you can in any way, shape or form, transform um, just the pure pollution aspect of fashion and the mere aspect of here, we've got to do 50 collections a year and you got to make, 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 make. The fact that, that we are reducing the collection to smaller amount of pieces, I don't know if they did that on purpose or if they did that just because Adrian came really late to the game, so he didn't have the time to do more. This I do not know. I do welcome a smaller collection. Oh, this is so refreshing to watch after the Tom Ford collection with 150 billion pieces of the same piece coming on the runway. It's ridiculous. I love that it's succinct short, we produce less, we damage the environment less. And then if you can also utilize the clothes to also kind of give out a statement to raise awareness to people about, you know, not consuming too much, what Vivian Westwood used to say, buy less, choose well, make it last. If Franco Moschino's legacy can somehow be translated into the modern Moschino through that activism, then I, I'm all here for it. I want that sweater. Tyler says, I'm enjoying this very on-trend indie sleaze, but referential to old school pre-Jeremy Moschino, right? There's something about it. I also liked the flavor of it. Josiah says, not mad about this at all. Five Foot Nothing says, love that print. Katie says, oh, I'm loving this collection. Debbie says, this has my attention. 
Uh, Nat says, loves the pearl necklaces. Gloria says, I want that boat hat. Oh, it's a cutie, right? With the newspaper. I wonder if the newspaper has a print that's somehow political or connected to something, possibly. Gosh, get a life says, I'm in love with the Mary Jane shoes. Five foot nothing says, the hat is fabulous, very origami. Love the sweater too, says Monarch. Five foot nothing says, gorgeous pearls. Tyler says, loved it, wearable, but still in the Moschino universe. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts on the new Moschino down below. Are you going to get anything from the collection? Also, I think the prices are not going to be crazy exorbitant like Chanel prices are or like Tom Ford prices are or like um, uh, Yves Saint Laurent or Saint Laurent prices are. I think Moschino's prices are going to be a little bit more accessible, you know, still expensive, but compared to other brands, I think they're going to be a little bit more accessible. Let me know your thoughts and prayers down below. Subscribe and never give up on love. Thumb up the video. Bye. Mwah. So, yes, now I can take this off because I'm so terrified it's going to fall and break. Uh, okay. All right, there you go. We'll go, we'll go. Back into the archives you go. You've seen it, and that it's done. Now we have the little Chanel thing still left. Okay. So, now we're going on another journey. <clears throat> So, um, LA Elsie says, I'm getting the knitwear, the trench coat, a fun hat, and those red pumps. The red pumps are gorgeous. Zucchini pound cake. I'm curious to see. Hi, by the way. Love your avatar. I'm curious to see the next McQueen show. They got a new creative director, and the last photo shoot on their Insta looks like a high school project. Oh, boy. That does not sound good. That does not sound good. Fashion show to fashion show. Such a life in the bunker. Yes, honey, we are very jet setting today. Now, the next show that we're going to go, we're going to go conservative, okay? Because I thought to myself, let's do Tom Ford, which is going to be like boring, <laughs> allegedly. And then we're going to jump to Moschino, a little bit of pep. Now let's go back to conservative. We're going to go to Bottega Veneta. Cha. We're going to review Matthew Blasey. Is it going to be Blasé? <laughs> See what I did there? We're going to review Matthew Blasey's um, Bottega Veneta show. MC says they also went back to the old McQueen logo. Oh, is that a bad thing, y'all? Fashun says La Hotta. Why did you change your name, Louis? La is there like a reason that I'm missing? Is a political reason? Uh, Rhea says McQueen also got rid of the Alexander from uh, the logo. Hmm. Well, you know, for me, Alexander McQueen should just, they should just stop. I said this before, but I'm going to say it again. Thumb up this live stream and Alexander McQueen, now that he's gone, let the brand rest for a couple of years, at least a decade. Stop it. You're just ruining it, you know? And until the right person comes along, I would let the brand rest in peace, seriously. And, and also, it was Alexander McQueen's wish. He didn't want anybody to create after him anyway. So it's all a little bit, you know, we'll go, we'll go, wish. We'll go, we'll go, wish, you know. Rhea says, I agree, Jacob. Yeah. And and this, I'm not saying this because I want to be petty. I'm saying this out of respect for Alexander McQueen's legacy, to be honest with you. Because, I mean, what does he have from it? He has nothing of it. He's gone. So it's not like it benefits him if they keep producing. So... You know. Uh huh. Alexander McQueen belongs to caring. Well, caring ain't caring much, is it? Ah! Oh, we'll go, we'll go. Allegedly. So listen, the amount of of ads every two minutes. I have one. Oh, Shikma. Well, that's fabulous. Thank God YouTube is doing something. You know what I mean? That's my only income, y'all. Or do you want me to sit here and talk to you for ten minutes about bag stuffers? Yeah, fake. Diamonds. You want me to? Do you want me to do that? Should I uh, get some sponsors and spend in a three-hour live stream thirty minutes talking to you about how amazing uh, a bag stuffer is and how amazing an app is, uh, how amazing some weird video game nobody cares about is? Do you want me to do that? I sure. We can do that <laughs> if that's what you want. <laughs> 
<laughs> they are they're writing me. All of these brands are constantly writing me and asking me to 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 do a sponsorship with them. The reason I say no is because I have some form of integrity left, unlike other YouTubers who are ready to sell their soul to the devil for a buck and a quarter. Yeah? Talk about integrity. Watching law channels, yeah? Talking about serious law stuff and then drop in 10 advertisements self-recorded in a video talking about you know super serious stuff in the video and then like and the ad is like here and buy this sticker for your uh phone holder it's amazing girl deb shop says please no to <laughs> to the stuffers juni says what's a bag stuffer <laughs> get those coins says kev Natalie Deed says, that's why we're still here, Dacob. Thank you, Natalie. Uh, Deb says, you're doing the right thing, not taking a bunch of sponsors. Thank you, Debbie Shops. Letty says, I still remember that VH1 Fashion Awards show where McQueen received the award for avant-garde, and I fell in love with his designs ever since, until his last one. Hmm. Talk to me about the stuffers, honey, says La Jota. Not that stuffer. Oshi D, how's it going? Talk about gray sweatpants. Yeah, you want those ridges, honey. Hey, Saya, frozen luxury in the house. It's given Teddy Blake reviews. Saya, I just watched uh, the rerun while I was getting ready for my show. I watched the rerun of your live stream with Winnie. Adorable, both of you, super cute. I love how Winnie goes into her rants, talks, talks, talks. And Saya, you can see that Saya comes from sales. I also come from sales, so... You can see Saya is like, he just, you know, he just listens very politely. You know, he's very, very polite. Saya knows. I see that you come from sales as well. So anyway, adorable, the two of you together. Shade was dropped. Information was delivered, honey. I did not know that you were no longer in touch with Foxy. And and also how Rich Lux started. <laughs> and also, the luxury women are planning a meet and greet, yeah? And they didn't invite you, nor did they invite me. I'm telling you, shade has been thrown. Shade has been thrown. Hey, Valentina Capuano. Hey, Julie, simple opinion. Monarch says, me too, Letty. Five or nothing. It's a joke. Little luxury YouTubers wear toms. Yeah. Valentina Capuano says, ciao, Jacob. Finally, I can see you live. You truly give me so much joy. Oh, Valentina. Grazie mille. Gloria. Ah, I capito. Ellie says, the drama. Oh, yeah, Saya, the shake. You know I got eyes everywhere. I might not, you know, watch it when it's live because I'm in the middle of something else. But I watch a rerun. But I watch a rerun. Jolie's like, like you'd go to the meet and greet. <laughs> well, I don't know. I kind of liked Winnie's idea of doing a meet and greet in, in Vegas, baby. That one I, I might go to. I might go to the Vegas one, you know. Frozen Luxury says, are you loving my mini videos? F Saya, uh, you know I love them because I like each and every one of them I see. You know I heart everything you post. Because if I follow you, I support you. So, and I love them. I love how you said like, okay, I'm going to tell you how to pronounce this brand. It's like Hermes. Simply Hermes. <laughs> I love how you take the piss out of it. Yes, I do love your mini videos. So you guys go follow Frozen Luxury on Instagram. I guess you're also on TikTok. I don't, I, I, I have a TikTok account, but I never like go to TikTok. So, you know, oh, Saya said, let's meet in Vegas. Ah, oh, Debbie, you also watched the video. Okay, so wait, so, ah, Saya said, let's meet in Vegas, but then Winnie said she has a sister that lives in Vegas. I think that's why I got confused, the, the two things. But anyway, um, exactly, Nancy. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, honey. Just like what happens in the pre-show. The fashion bunker stays in the pre-show. We know a, a thing or two about that. Um, but uh, um, hey, James Stansfield. Hi, Chad. Happy midweek. Hey, sweetie. So that would be a blast, right? And um, so, uh, wait, what did I want to say? No, I forgot. Oh, yeah, TikTok. So I guess uh, Frozen Luxury is also on TikTok. 
I have a TikTok account, but I'm never on TikTok. I really don't like TikTok. So go follow Frozen Luxury on TikTok if he's on TikTok, but also follow him on Instagram and on YouTubes. All right, there you go. Shout sh to Frozen Luxury. AKA Saya. And he also threw shade at Coach. So there's, that's my type of guy. You throw shaded coach, I-Y-K-Y-K, I-Y-K-Y-K, because I'm, frankly, I'm sick of it. Sick and tired of people trying to make coach into a luxury happening on YouTube. I've said it, so punish me with the banana up my rectum. How I don't care. You? I'll take the punishment. <laughs> Canceled. Sick and tired of, sick and tired of it. Trying to turn coach into, into a luxury happening on, on YouTube. And you know what? Yes, coach is a luxury happening on YouTube because there's nothing luxury about YouTube. Okay. So yes, there you go. Cheers. <laughs> oh, hi, Jackie. How's it going, sweetie? I have nothing against coach, you guys. I'm just being a bitch, but, uh, you know. It's just not my brand. That's all. All right. Love you loads. Okay. Just because you love coach doesn't mean I don't love you. Okay. 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 Not my watch, says Kev. Right? Thank you. Letty says, Deiko, what perfume are you wearing? Red day. I'm wearing Lulu. Thinking of buying a backup because I'm afraid we'll go scarce as Eden has. Um... So I, I cannot really reveal to you what perfume I'm wearing because, you guys, little uh, Easter egg moment for you. Before I started the live stream, I filmed offline a perfume video. And uh, so... Chanel! <laughs> Stop it, Bubbles. It's so insane. So I cannot, I cannot really say what perfume I'm wearing. Um, but now that you're asking me, I'm going to tell you what perfume I'm going to put on now, because I actually, oh, I have two options, y'all. No, Butter. I want to put, no, no, it's always, I always go back to my love, Chanel number five. We're going to do the extrait. Teresa says, lol, so funny as you are talking about coach. I just got a message from coach advertisement. Ah, Terry, they're listening. Chanel number five extrait. That's what we're going to do, y'all. I just, I always, I can't, you know what? It's during the live streams, nothing gives me energy like Chanel number five extrait. It, it elevates me. It just, it, it kind of brings me up. I don't know. It makes me feel good. It makes me feel like I can talk and get through it. And, and my mind can go in different places at the same time. It's just. Uh, I don't want to put it here because I have too much layers. I'm just going to put it here So for now. Just one spritz because it's really intense. You know, it's the extreme. Coach's Luxury just donated $2. Coach's Luxury donated $2. Yeah, Coach. You see, this is why Coach is not luxury. It donates $2. How is that luxury? But I still love you, Coach. <laughs> Hit it, Bubbles, minimally. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you see what I mean? That's where it's at, baby. That's where it's at. That's where it's at. Gloria Athenos is like, yes! <laughs> MC says $2 is fitting. <laughs> it's the outlet. It's 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 the um, coach outlet that sent the... <laughs> <laughs> it's the coach outlet, y'all. So anyway, oh, Chanel number five, the extrait, you guys, inevitable. I adore this perfume. Mm. It, it, it gives me life. How can I explain it? It gives me freaking life. I don't think there's any other perfume that I've reviewed more on my perfume channel than Chanel number five in all its iterations. And some several times, like the extrait, I've made a ton of videos just on the extrait over and over and over and over again. I'm like Chanel herself, you know, Coco Chanel kept making the same tailleur ensemble over and over and over again, like her uniform. She was obsessed with it. That's how I review perfumes like Chanel number five, Chanel number five, Chanel number five. <laughs> and every review is slightly different. We add a little bit, something new to every review. Um, 
Me too, Jocelyn. Number five makes me feel comforted and safe. Which one? Hi, Marina. Hi, how's it going, Marina? Uh, uh, Marina's like, hi, everyone. Are we discussing coach? Oh, are we dissing coach? Yeah, that's pretty true. That's true. and Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. That's pretty true. That's pretty true. I mean, that's true. I said nothing. That was just bubbles blabbering on about I don't know what. But I can tell you this much. Jackie says, but even coach is a company I didn't think they ever said they are luxury. They are well known for the flight attendant bag and uh, state worker bag. There you go. Honesty. There you go. Joyful Remorse is me running to the coach outlet to look at rogues. We'll go, we'll go. Um... Five Foot Nothing says, number five is the only perfume I use. Fabulous, darling. Do you use the extrait? Terry says, I bought the Chanel number 19 Eau de Toilette that was just released. It's green and smells divine. I love it too. It's a reformulated lighter version, but I still adore it. Great choice, Terry. Beautiful perfume. Crybaby Uzagi is crying because, well, Crybaby Uzagi. <laughs> Original Coco is my um, tried and true love, says Robin Miller. Rooney and Burke is more luxury than Coach, says OCD. Well, Anyway, um, let's <laughs> let's do the next video. Chanel! We're going we're gonna to jump into Bottega, Bottega Winida. And uh, I'm going to powder my nose. Not that powder. Get your minds out of the gutter. <clears throat> so, yeah. So, Saya, like, if you're going to do Vegas, let a hoe know. I might just join you. And if all those people from the penal colonies or, you know, from the continent don't wish to invite us to the New York event, then we'll just won't invite them to the Vegas event. Bottega Veneta. Guys, I'm loving the Coach Denim Quilted Tabby officially released tomorrow and went by one. And <laughs> Sarah... Zara, Zonzue, Zonzue. <laughs> Terry says, I would come to Vegas. There you go. Uh, Valentina says, all the perfumes I bought following your advice are amazing. And of course, number five is my favorite. Oh, Valentina Capuano. Yeah, you know, you know, I would only recommend the ones I love, you know. And I will also talk about the ones I don't love. But then I will say, like, this perfume is not good for this and this reason, in my humble opinion. Blah, blah, blah. Hi, DDV. How's it going, sweetie? Hey. Um... So, let's do Bottega Veneta <clears throat> by, uh, what's his face? Matthew Blase. <sighs> 149 likes, y'all. Let's get to 200 likes. Keep thumbing up the live stream. Love you loads. Okay, we're on Milan Fashion Week. Hit it, Bubbles. Oh, we're filming. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Today, we are heading off to Milan Fashion Week as we're going to review the Bottega Veneta Fall Winter 2024 collection by Matthew Blasey. Or is it going to be Blasé? Well, we'll be the judges of that as we review a video that has been posted on the Bottega Veneta YouTube channel. So it falls under fair use. I will, however, use a different music that is copyright free, not the music that was used during the show. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, push the join button next to the subscription button, become a member today, gain access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Deco Ball, spelled together there as well. For extra perks, this video is being filmed live in front of a live virtual audience. I live stream several times a week, so come join the fun. Hi to my co-chators. Everything I say in this video is for entertainment purposes only, not rooted in truths or facts. Everything's alleged and just my opinion. Let the show roll. So we are in Milan and we are watching the Fall Winter 2024 Bottega Veneta collection by Matthew Blasi. Okay, so we got like, is it a sunrise or a sunset? Winter 24. Yes, it's a coat, it's a jacket. I guess climate change is no issue for Milan Fashion Week because they do believe that it will be cold. And the coat, now knowing Bottega Veneta, are they like doing a little ha 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 moment and the coat is leather and not wool, you know, like. <laughs> and like, and twist, the entire coat is made out of lambskin. No, it, it does look, oh, I love the shape of the, the kind of how it falls rounded the shoulders. This is a beautiful coat. Darn. 
The Intrecciato bag, I love that olive green tone. Ooh, this is a clutch I want. <gasps> What's it gonna be, Kev? Kev is in the chats. Kev, is it gonna be like 10K? What's it gonna be? Yeah, okay, these several like tones of yellow and eggshell, this I, I'm not a fan of. Although I do love the brown Intrecciato glove, that kind of burgundy. The bag, no, too pointy. You're gonna end up beating stuff up with it and those pointy little edges are gonna get all beat up and scratched up, so I'm not a fan of the bag. Ah, uh, here we go, the leather version. I knew it was gonna come out sooner or later. The leather version with the same kind of rounded puffy sleeves and probably a leather skirt. Okay, we've seen this before. Not a big fan of this. Although I do love that detail of the button with the black and, oh, that is cute. Giving me thir late 30s, early 40s vibes. Very Hollywood. <clears throat> yeah, I love the jacket. I love these sleeves. These are really, really nice. I even like the shoes. What's going on here? All right, Mr. Matthew, you're not blasé. You might be really, you know, okay, so we're repeating the same kind of coat and jacket, different lengths, but like in different colorways. Love this 30s detail of the buttons flipping the outfit from one color to the other. So elegant. Nothing new, mind you, you guys. This is very historic fashion, but very, very elegant, very beautiful. Oh, even the sweater is kind of giving, don't you think? The bag, no. The jacket, I mean, of course, when you, you know, they styled it like, I mean, that little helmet hat, maybe a little bit too war vibes, not really a fan of it. But I, I get the references, you know, but, you know, would not want to wear, oh, this is so elegant. This is now going back to the 80s. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's giving me some type of vibes. You know, the coats do look warm, says Debs, right? Uh, Corey says, leg of mutton sleeve on that sweater. Bag does look, look like butter, says Gloria. And uh, MC says, love, 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 Bottega in the chats. All of this I'm reading from the chats, you guys. Uh, oh, thank you, Stephanie says, love it when you review runway shows, Jacob. Thank you. Kev says, well, hello, Phoebe Philo. Oh. Kev is throwing some shade. I love, look at this, the contrast between this gorgeous red and this brown. This is taking me back in time. Yes, it does have an 80s vibe to it because it's very kind of, you know, exuberant in an 80s type of way. But don't forget, you guys, the 80s. Oh, the shoulders. Mm, I'm all for the huge shoulder. Again, that crotch area, just like we've seen with Tom Ford. Something's going on in the crotch area for all these dudes, huh? And um, But uh, don't forget that the 80s were also very much uh, a decade referencing all sorts of other decades. You had 80s referencing the 40s, 80s referencing the 30s, the 50s, the 60s, and the 70s. Oh, the tie flying in the back. Okay. Oh, this is probably all made out of leather. This is kind of like the standout piece that, you know... I would never want to wear, but it's like, hey, look what we can do with our leather, blah, blah, blah. This is one of those like show off pieces that are, you know, editorial. But like I said, so it, it does look like 80s doing the 30s or the 40s. So in other words, this is 2024 giving 80s giving 30s. So you see what's happening. I'm loving this piece too. Uh, very Uncle Fester. It's giving a very much the state of affairs we are today. You know, there's kind of no innovation in fashion at the moment. What we're seeing is constant regurgitation, reappropriation of styles and designs and shapes and forms and colors that we've seen in the past. And everybody's trying to make money in a time where it seems like people are not really, not only do we not have the money to spend anymore so much on these pieces, but we're also really tired of spending. We are approaching the dawn of a new era. This is the, the smallest head on the tallest body I've ever seen in my life but it will go, will go, um, this guy. So we are approaching a phase where we're just tired. It's not even about the recession anymore, you guys. The dawn and the age of influencers is over. Yeah, believe it or not. And uh, brands are even approaching sponsorships from a different point of view. Now they want you to believe that everything is organic. They don't want influencers. Oh, I love how this thing flows and changes color as, as you move. This is beautiful, really beautiful. Oh, I love this too. It's kind of like a tweed woven wool texture. Thin, you know, not too thick, but still keeps you warm. Beautiful. Um, and uh, <clears throat> so, you know, 
the way you're going to be seeing sponsorships and the way you're going to see ads running on social media is going to change quite a bit in the near near future so mark my words and thank goodness we're done with the ratchet influencers selling you crap on social media you know because like people are waking up and we're kind of like realizing well hold on a minute not everything that these oompa loompas shows us is actually worth it you know this bag too droopy i'm not liking the leather on that one so just saying The graffiti version of this with all oh no it's like stamps like a travel pattern no i'm not liking the print pattern here and the fact that it's kind of very heavy at the bottom and weighs at the bottom very heavy not i preferred the other version of the changing wavy pattern oh this is a light pink oh, that was a beautiful shirt this is too messy i'm not a fan of fur in any way shape or form really not because of you know because of the animals obviously too but i just Especially when it's so patchy, it's giving me insect dust and moths. I'm not not a fan. And I don't like this asymmetrical weight of the skirt on one side more than the other. Usually, usually, you know, and I've I've been working in fashion for a long time as well, and usually women do not go for that. They don't buy those that are kind of heavy on one side skirts. It's kind of Symmetry is more the word du jour if you want to be sure to sell more in general in in general, you know But then times change all the time But you know you want a classic if you're gonna buy a skirt and you're gonna a dress and you're gonna invest a ton of money You want it to have a certain rigor a certain line a certain texture Robin Miller says asymmetrical necklines though asymmetrical necklines is a different story there I agree with you look at the beauty of how this yellow and eggshell yellow and turn into orange as it as you walk Gorgeous, 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 you know. Love the length of the trench coat. Okay, so this is lined like a ruler, like a notebook. So what you're supposed, they're inviting you to write all over the, <laughs> what, $20,000 trench coat? I don't think so. These glossier uh, leathers, not a fan. Shiny leathers that have like kind of a coating on them that usually, you know, they don't age very well in my humble opinion not a fan of those i would prefer a buttery textured leather that doesn't have that extra sheen on it that extra coating on it it can be shiny but not coated like that one is that asymmetry down there <clears throat> love the oversized length trench coat would not wear it because i'm not tall enough for this you gotta be really tall to pull this off, otherwise you really look like Uncle Fester. Beautiful shade of pink. Into the chato little pouchlet, adorbs. Oh wow, look at that. Wait, yeah, we're back. Oh, this is early 40s, late 30s vibes. Mm -hmm. Nice. I like the shoes as well. Almost like witchy coven vibes, right? Here, that's the type of leather I like. I like it when it's kind of slightly mattified, still has a sheen to it, but it doesn't have that plasticky coating that makes it look very shiny. So that particular leather was good. Tweed texture here. I don't know if this is a print or if it's woven. Oh, it's a beautiful color here, but I, I again, too long. I, not for me, not for my, you know, body type. You know, bomber jackets usually look good on me for my personal body shape. But if you're very tall and slender, then you can pull off a very, very elongated trench. You know. In general, the rule of thumb is the shorter you are, the shorter your jacket should be. Don't do long coats if you're very tiny. And especially if you're a little bit chubbier. It's just going to make you look like the, you know, like a Teletubby. So if you're going for the Teletubby look, then by all means do it. But if you kind of want to play with your own proportions, then you wear a shorter jacket cut, you know, at the waist or a little bit higher and you play with those proportions. It gives you a silhouette and it gives you more elongation proportion wise better. Just saying. But you do you. Oh, loving the, the, the collar, you know, although it would not work if you have makeup on because the second you turn around, you're going to smear your makeup all over that piece. Foundation. This, th these pieces are beautiful on the runway, but not practical to wear if you have makeup on your face, especially the lighter toned ones. Mm -hmm.
Just being practical here, I mean, unless you don't have millions of dollars and you're buying these clothes like they were H&M, then you don't care. You're gonna wear the piece only a couple of times, but that would be a pity, it's a waste, right? It's also not so good for the environment. You should really, like Vivian always says, buy less, choose well, make it last. So I always look at these pieces, especially the very expensive collections and brands, and I always look at these pieces and I think to myself, okay, try to zone out and phase out the trendy seasonal pieces and look into the classics. Look at what you would buy from this collection that you would want to wear also 10 years from now. Granted, the quality is that good that this piece will keep, you know, its integrity. Uh, so, I personally, you know, uh, always look at these collections thinking, okay, what's the piece that is, okay, the fish bag, no, it's just a whimsical piece, like what's the piece that is timeless, you know, what's style, not fashion, what is style, and we go for those pieces because those are the pieces we will not get tired of. Okay, this is a red carpet piece, obviously, a little Cocorico moment, very Gautier, if you think about it. Um, yeah, these shoulders, you see, the, the sh it's the shoulder that makes it very on trend for now, not timeless. These usually loose-fitted pieces like this jacket slash shirt, which are very reminiscent of, you know, Japanese or Asian cuts and styles, that's more timeless. But it is kind of Yoji Yamamoto-esque, right? The, I mean, this we've seen a, a thousand times throughout the decades in fashion. This is nothing new. We've seen many different designers work with this. So it's kind of referential, manneristic. It's more of a, like a little divertissement moment. Cute for the runway. I would not recommend buying it. But nice in a catalog, editorial, you know what I mean. Like these are the more experimental pieces. Now here's another one. Oh, this is a classic. Okay, you want a trench coat that's classic and you're tall enough? That's the color I would recommend, that's the material, and that's the cut. Of all the trench coats we've seen in this collection, that's the one. If you want it to be timeless, that's the one. That gray one, you gotta be tall enough, but that's the one. Yeah, this is more showing the savoir-faire of the technique, how they do, you know, it's not a piece you would necessarily buy to keep forever. So now we're gonna have the final run through. Uh, Mr. Blazy, I think you did a good job. Overall, it's a solid collection. It's very Bottega Veneta, right? It has some glimpses, references to the past. It has some very, very on-trend moments of right now. It's giving tiny hints towards the future with some of the more military pieces, like for example, that weird helmet hat made out of felt. It felt like pressed wool. That's giving us kind of glimpses into some strange and uh, dystopian future in a way. So it's, it's giving us a little bit of everything, isn't it? And it's giving us classic vibes as well. Corey says, these are all very classic. Now, if I could just drop like 75, <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, th that's why, uh, Corey, that's where the trench coats come in handy, you see. They can kind of cover us up. Ah, um, oh, there he is. All right, Mr. Blazy. And, uh, yeah, okay. Humble. Mm -hmm. Go. Gee. Gee. Back, back to the room. Go. Make some more fashion. So, uh, Debbie says, me likey. That yellow silk was nice as Corey. 40s nurse vibes, tan, says Jolie. Joyful remorse says, oh my God, that one bag looks like Bond's shoulder bag. My first Bottega Veneta back in 2008. Bottega Veneta will always have a place in my heart. Uniform reference also reflective of the 40s, says Robin Miller. Very much so, very, very much so, but very much so, but it's the way that they were formed and shaped, the roundness, the, in other words, the ergonomic almost kind of biological shape that they were assuming is what was futuristic about it, even though it was referencing very strongly the 40s. Um, Valentina Capuano says, I'm very pleased with this collection. I love the outfits that reference the 30s and the 40s. There you go, guys. Let me know if you like the show and if you did not like the show. Either way, why did you not like it if you didn't like it? If you liked it, tell me why you liked it. Are you going to get any pieces? Are there going to be any pre-orders you're going to leave with your sales associates and be like, can I please have this? And did you prefer more the clothing or the bags? Because, you know, Bottega Veneta is quite famous, especially on YouTube, you know, luxury YouTube for their bags. But I want to personally say for me, 
I was watching the clothes more than the bags in this collection. There was that one clutch that really caught my eye, the kind of like elongated one with the flap on top, the intrecciato in that beautiful kind of green, beigey green hue, olive green hue. That one took my heart. But for the most part, I want to say this was for me, the clothing took my interest more than the bags, which is the way it should be. Honestly, if you're going to make a fashion show, unless you're not all about just your leather bags, well, in that case, just make a presentation of your bags, put on pillars and let people see the bags. You know what I mean? So I think as a fashion show, this worked. Uh, Leah says, I like their clothing more. Classic, minimal, with a twist. Robin says, dichotomy of extreme large paired with a small clutches hmm. oh and avatar primus says 30s and 40s my favorite fashion era let me know your thoughts down below five foot nothing says it's the best bottega show since a while now well there you go and Corey says from a seamstress perspective of the three that was my favorite lots of techniques and good use of fabrics in the bottega veneta show Corey means of the three we already reviewed other shows you can also check those out as well we reviewed the Tom Ford Fall Winter 24 collection, the Moschino Fall Winter 24 collection, and now the Bottega. And we're going to review some more later on. All right, guys, let me know your thoughts and prayers down below. Thumb up the video, subscribe. And until next time, never forget to never give up on love. Bye. Mwah. Love the color, says Terry. There was some good vibes in this show, I got to say, right? <clears throat> there were some good vibes. Let me take a sip of water now. I'm combining all my liquids. I have coffee, Red Bull, water. Not sponsored by anybody. LALC says, very bourgeois. Um, the, the clothes were good, very good. Ready to wear represent 10% of the 1.6 billion sales so it can have a reality. Liz says, love the pop of colors and the accessories. Most of the collection is wearable. Yes, if we could only afford it now, because I think Bottega's prices are very, very high. Okay, those coats, you can't, I don't think you'll be able to get those coats under 10K a pop. Mm -mm. You know what I mean? Corey says, I love that we're doing this. I don't really have any friends that would look at stuff like this the way I do. There you go, Corey. Welcome to the Fashion Bunker. Liz M says, love the pop of colors. Oh, sorry, you read that one already. Oh, yeah, everything is cheaper than Chanel. LALC says Bottega is cheaper than Chanel. Yeah. Yes, but um, Chanel is on another level of... Uh, Chanel! Ins of insanity. Like, they... The Chanel level of insanity. I mean... Their prices are, yeah, insane. And, and I mean, you know, you, you buy Chanel just because you love Chanel at, at this point. There, there's no other justifying <laughs> their prices. Uh, beautiful tailoring and lines mixed on the bags. Not sure how I feel about the giant ones. Yeah, me too. Not, in, not into the giant ones either. LALC says it's the same price point as Prada and Bottega is more qualitative. Oh, I can totally totally see how Bottega is better quality than Prada like even from a distance even from just like seeing the representation here on the runway like you you feel through the image just how the fabrics flow my favorite pieces for the ladies were definitely those kind of you know the two shade colors that had those twisted closures uh oh beautiful very poetic and of course, the plissé type of vibe that kind of as it moves, you get the two colors and it keeps kind of vibrating between the two tones of the same colors. Loved it. Just loved seeing it. I I wouldn't want to wear it because then I wouldn't be able to see the colors shifting on me. But it's definitely clothes that I would want to see on other people all the time because I want to see that beautiful, fun, whimsical, dynamic and texture and fabrics while you're walking in front of me wearing that piece. I would follow you like a stalker through the town, just like, you know, looking at it mesmerized because it's beautiful to see. So Corey says these were designed by someone who loves fabrics. Yes. And as you can see, now you're also getting a little bit of a picture. Somebody asked me, I didn't want to give it away. Uh, somebody asked me earlier on in the live stream, like, what's the criteria by which you chose the fashion shows to review in this live stream? Now you're getting a picture slowly, how I choose. Just like Corey said, those were designed by someone who loves fabric. 
this live stream is designed by someone who loves a conversation and who loves fashion. So you have to see this live stream also as me weaving a tapestry and a fabric. So for every fashion show that we review, uh, for every conversation that we have, it's like adding another texture or like, let's say we're weaving a tweed and we're adding another layer. So by the time we're done with the live stream, you have a full formed picture of what the fall winter 2024 scenario is going to look like for fashion, at least for Milan Fashion Week, because we have different facets of fashion. We've had this kind of referential, not being able to really move forward, but let's overproduce Tom Ford. Then we have this kind of shifting gears at Moschino, trying to find the past, but making a tiny collection, make it whimsical. Are we going to go political? Very different, Moschino. And then now we have Bottega Veneta, which is, again, a completely different approach to fashion than the first two that we've seen. And yet all three of them represent fall winter 2024 in their own special ways with their own special clients. Everybody has it. So, but my overall look is I want to weave this tapestry with the most opposites possible to form a, a bigger picture, right? And uh, that bigger picture is for us a representation of what fashion is, but also of interest and like also being able to communicate and talk about fashion Maybe in a poetic way, maybe analytical, critical. I mean, we talk about it from many different perspectives and we can talk about it from different perspectives because each one of these collections offers us a different point of view on fashion and also the commerce of fashion. You know, it is an industry and it is a business at the end of the day. Uh, oh, Corey, yeah, Plissé, very tricky technique. It's very hard to do. And I don't even think this was really Plissé. Uh, I, I think this was literally... Because I th I think they didn't just fold it and, you know, do the plissé. I think between the two colors, there was an extra tubing, like a piping that they've sewn to to flatten out the, the, you know, the transition from one color to the next. But again, in order to know this, we would have to really be there and see these pieces live and touch them to be able to understand the technique that they used to, to make that. I just say pl plissé because it reminds me of plissé but probably there's a different name to this technique because you never know. Okay. Mm. So now you have a little bit more of an idea how I choose these shows. And of course, you can't... Uh, You can't have Milan Fashion Week without some scandal. Scandal! <laughs> um, thumb up the live stream, y'all. Uh, thumb up the live stream as we're heading towards an insane... <clears throat> fashion show, uh, not qu because of its quality, but rather because of the subversive nature of this next show that we're going to watch together at Milan Fashion Week. It looks like those clutches are available now, still pricey, but not as bad as I thought, says Kev. Uh, there's 163 likes, you guys. Come on, let's get to 200 likes. I'd kill to get my hands on it. So that I can see how they did that effect. Yeah, Corey, that would be beautiful to see. But I mean, like six months from now, some of those pieces will be hitting some Bottega Veneta stores, hopefully. And if you have one near you, you can go and check them out. But again, maybe not all of these pieces are going to go into production. Who knows? Now, 163 likes. Can we get some more likes up in here? Like, we'll go, we'll go. Oh, Corey says, I'd actually use this show to teach an introduction to fabrics. Do I still have some coffee? Oh, I do. Hmm. All right. Now, <clears throat> actually, before we do the next show, I have another topic I want to talk to you about. Butter. Oh. Itchy and scratchy, so okay. 
Don't do this at home, guys. I'm a professional scratcher. Um, all right. We'll go, we'll go. Hi, everybody. Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Do you remember just a short while ago we were talking about luxury brands hiding price decreases? And I mentioned it through a video uh, that was structured around McDonald's. Yes, believe it or not, I mentioned that McDonald's is has outpriced themselves. One of their CEOs mentioned in an interview that they're going to start going down with their prices. They're going to try to make, you know, special offer menus through their app because they've noticed that their middle class earning customer in the United States of America has been outpriced and is no longer purchasing that much. So similar happening in the luxury fashion world, although a little bit more hush-hush, no CEOs have officially come out to say, hey, we're going to reduce our prices because it's not sales. This is not about, oh, end of season sales. This is about, for the time being, permanently decreasing a price. Like we make videos about, oh, there's going to be another price increase. You know, Chanel double flaps are going to go up in price. Hermes Birkins are going to go up in price. Then there's those videos where people say, oh, look, there's like a pre-sale, secret sale by this brand on invitation only or blah, blah, blah. But then there are those videos that are going to come more and more in the future. Mark my words, but still nobody's talking about it except yours truly. And those are the price decreases. Now, this video is fascinating. We're going to touch base on some of these price decreases that are already happening. And they're happening in many different forms and shapes. Now, what is interesting is that in my McDonald's price decrease video, in the comments section underneath, I have received quite a few comments, some of them already sending me receipts from brands that they know that they've shopped from, luxury brands, where they've noticed a price decrease from, you know, one month to the next on the same product. So I'm telling you right now here as well, please, in the comment section down below, if you're watching this video, thumb it up, of course, subscribe to my channel, but also in the comment section down below, if you also have examples and receipts, right, of products that you've seen from luxury brands in the past weeks or months, or actually right now, where you know that the price used to be higher, now it's lower, but it's not marked down as on sale. No, 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 we're talking about hush, hush. It's literally the new price of the product. Like the product used to be $1,000, now it's 800, but it's not reduced in price. Like it's 800, there was a decrease. If you know of any such products and any such brands, let me know down below. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you the ones that I've seen thus far playing this game with us, but trying to keep it hush hush. So subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, push the join button next to the subscription button, become a member today, gain access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Deco Ball spelled together there as well for extra perks. This video is being filmed live in front of a live virtual audience. I live stream several times a week, so come join the fun and come join the chats. <clears throat> Hi, Code Chatters. Everything I say in this video is for entertainment purposes only, not rooted in truths or facts. Everything's alleged and just my opinion. Kev says, it looks like... Oh, Kev, actually, you also uh, mentioned uh, a little price decrease you've, you've seen a couple of months ago. Drop it in the chats again so I can read your, your chat as well. Now, I'm going to get to one of the comments that was uh, posted under my McDonald's price decrease video which you can also go and check out, by Emanuela. Hi, Emanuela. How's it going, sweetie? This is a publicly posted comment. That's why I'm reading it. So Emanuela says, what a brilliant video as always, Jacob. Thank you, Emanuela. Thank you so much. I noticed that the Prada re-edition 2000s, 2000s bag price dropped not a long time ago. I think it happened a couple of months ago. It used to cost 2,100 euro here in Italy, but now, instead of 2,100 euro, it costs 1,800 euro. When I realized that, I was shocked. Lots of love from Rome. Love to you too, sweetie. Thank you, Manuela, very much. So Prada is playing a game. A reduction, not a reduction, uh, a price reduction which is not a sale, I repeat, from 2,100 to 1,800 euro. That is a difference in of 300 euro. That's quite a jump, quite a jump. 
that's a pretty hefty reduction. Um, AJ Star 5769, hi, how's it going, sweetie? Also commented under that video and said, I saw the Prada Crystal re-edition for $2,300 and I was so confused. Am I the only one who saw it for $2,700 just last year? You're not the only one, my dear. Yes, in America, Prada seems to have also switched their prices, and they went from two seven to two three. That's a four hundred dollar price difference. You got to add taxes, of course, at the cash register when you're in America. But there you have it. Now, I've also received confirmation from other brands, which are still to remain a secret because I've been sworn to secrecy. But I can tell you this. The price was reduced drastically overnight, and some customers have purchased certain products at the other price and were not informed that the price then went down to a new standard price, not sale, but like forever price, which then they're going to have a price increase again in two or three years, whatever. But you know what I'm saying? Now, imagine being that customer that is buying from a brand regularly and you buy a product, let's say this little hair clip, okay, whatever, just first thing I had here in front of me, and you buy it for a hundred bucks. And then next week you go back to your favorite store and it's not a hundred dollars anymore, now it's sixty dollars. It's not on sale, that's the new price tag. And you go, wait, hold on a minute, I, mm, what? Now, of course these brands same applies when they have a price increase. It's not like you can go to them. It's not like the brand can come to you, like you bought this before the price increase for $60, now after the price increase it's $100, and you go walk into the store with this, you bought it for $60, and you walk into the store the next week when it's $100. The store cannot tell you, hey, this thing is now $100, you gotta pay $40 more. Of course they cannot do that, but in the same token, you also technically cannot really go back to them after the return period is up, you know, after, I don't know, depending on the brand and on your country, it can be 15, 14 days to a month, depending on the laws in your country, the consumer laws. But it's not like you can, you know, after your um, official date is, has expired for returning a product, you can't just say, well, hold on a minute, I bought this for 100, but now the new price, not on sale, the new standard price is 60, give me back 40 bucks. You see, I think new consumer laws should be put in place for this specific uh, situation because I personally don't think it's fair on the consumer for the brands to just be like, oopsie, we've outpriced ourselves a little bit. Well, tough titty. And, you know, if you bought something at the more expensive price a week ago, you're the sucker who thought it was worth that much money. But this tells us something. This tells us that these brands definitely work on a very, 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 very high markup. If they can just like this decide, oh, let's go down 500 bucks and we're still going to make a profit, then you know that they've been cheating us, allegedly. You know what I mean? By overpricing stuff to maximize profits as much as possible. Because if they don't have to blink twice, to put the prices down and they're still making a profit, then you know that they've been milking us dry. Now, this isn't all. There's more. <clears throat> I read an article where one of the CEOs from Louis Vuitton, LVMH, uh, just at the beginning of the year was announcing that they're kind of, because, you know, they're realizing, well, we do need the aspirational customer. They're not really saying it that way in the interview, but what they did say was very telling to me. They said in the interview, and I paraphrase, that now they're going to stop with the price increases that were very rampant during the pandemic years, and they're going to focus more, instead of price increasing, they're going to focus more on quality. I kind of fell off my chair when I read that, because to me it made no sense. I thought to myself, well, hold on a minute, why are you telling us this as if one was mutually exclusive of the other? Why are you saying we're going to stop the price increases and focus more on quality? Are you implying that when you were having the price increases during the pandemic years, you were not focusing on quality? Is that what I'm hearing here between the lines? Because 
One is not mutually exclusive of the other. You could have kept maintaining quality control while you were upping the prices. But instead, what I think was happening, you were pushing production to the extreme where nobody had any more time to actually manufacture pieces correctly as they should be produced, and hence quality started lacking. But you saw that your customers kept purchasing even after you were marking up every couple of months. So you thought to yourself, ha ha ha, you know, let me get greedy and let me milk them for whatever it's worth. Now they're saying, because probably sales have dropped, this is my speculation. Now they're saying we're going to focus more on quality, which makes me feel like I've been scammed. I'm like, so these past three years, all the stuff I've been buying from Louis, are you trying to tell me that that's crappy quality? Really? So should I bring it all back to you now and get it exchanged for the new pieces that you're going to make now with quality control? Is that what you're telling me? Because that's what it sounds like to me. Furthermore, let me, let me, uh, let me show you how another way in which I believe the luxury brands are going to decrease their prices. Now, hear me out on this. This is a very, very sneaky approach, but this is what I'm noticing lately certain products that are not classics, okay, we're not talking about the classics that have been around for, you know, the Speedy at Louis Vuitton, the Timeless Classic Double Flap at Chanel, the Hermes Birkin, or the Lady Dior at Dior. I'm talking about newly launched bags that during the last three-year pandemic period would have, as a seasonal launch, would have a very high price tag. I think the luxury brands can hide the price decrease by launching new products that haven't been launched before, but pricing those new products at a lower entry level price than they would have been priced had those products been launched a year or two prior. So this way, you don't have the proof that said product has had a price decrease because the product didn't exist a year or two ago. But all we have to go by is certain products being released a year or two or three ago, having a certain hefty price tag, and now a similar product of a similar size, of a similar construction, with similar, similar materials costing less than it would have cost had it been released two years ago. And this is something LVMH seems to be really good at. Okay, and I'm going to show you an example of what I think is a really good example. Monogram canvas, vaquetta leather, all the classic trademarks of Louis Vuitton. Now, when they launch a monogram canvas piece with vaquetta leather, we're talking a new one, a new seasonal piece, relatively regular size, you know, $2,500 to $3,000 is what usually you would pay for it. Or, you know, like 2,000 euro. Now, they, they're launching a brand new bag coming out on March 1st, but you can pre-order it already on the Louis Vuitton website, which is also something they didn't used to do a lot in the past. You would have to go to the boutique to buy it. Now they're like, they're allowing you to even pre-order stuff, pay in advance, online, we'll ship it to you when it's here. Don't worry, we're not limiting production. I'm like, oh, how interesting. Oh, we're not playing the limited edition game anymore. Okay, girl. Well, let me show you. Here's an example. And I'm going to show you the, I'm going to show you the euro price. And then I'm going to also show you the dollar price. Don't worry. We're going to get both prices. Look at this. This little tiny giblet, okay? 1,600 euro. Now, you might think it's still too expensive. I think this was originally planned to cost 2000 I can only speculate, obviously, because I don't work for Louis Vuitton. And this is a pre-order. Look at that. Pre-order now. Okay. And I chose this bag as an example because I think it's a cute bag. Oh, there you go. Katie says, I think it's cute. Yeah. Now, Monarch says, it does make you feel like you've been scammed. Right? MMM says not them exposing themselves. Let me show you another picture of just a bag without the lovely lady modeling it. It's like a soft one. You can kind of squish it a little bit. It comes with a little lock. And you know what I mean? It, it's, it's, a, it's a vibe, okay? You might like it or not like it. But what I'm saying is a bag like this two years ago or one year ago, 1,600 euro? No, this would have been 1,800 to 2,000. I think it would have been 1.8 to 2,000. The way it's structured, because of the monogram, because of the vaquetta, you might think, well, that's not a lot of vaquetta. Let me show you the side of the bag. Here's another picture. 
You see what I mean? Like it, it's it's a whole structure. Like this bag is structured to have this teardrop effect on the side, and then it's kind of stitched together. It's not a simple. It's not as simple as the pochette accessoires. This thing has a little bit more to it, construction-wise, you know, and and the the zipper pull and and the little lock. I mean, the whole construction is a little bit more going on there. Um, I think they're going down with their with their launch prices. Okay, their launch prices are not as high as they would be. Uh, you know what I mean? Katie says, it's like the Dior Club bag that was released for two seconds last year. Well, there you have it. Now, $1,600 euro. Let me show you the dollar price for the pre-order. There's also pre-order now. You know, as we know, Louis Vuitton costs more in America, import taxes and what have you. Anyway, $1,980 plus tax. Uh, I think as a launch price for this thing, it's still expensive. I'm not saying Louis Vuitton is not expensive. It is. But I think they would have charged you more two years ago for this than now. That's just me speculating. Let me show you the second photo. It's still American price, $1,980. So you get to see the whole thing. Pity that you cannot detach the... Here, this this strap, it's not detachable like it is on the pochette accessoires, but it is what it is. So this is an interesting example, in my humble opinion, of how um, a decrease is there even though it's not really there. You see what I mean? This is how you can hide it by launching a product that you would have priced higher in the past than you would now. I repeat... Thumb up the video and let me know in the comment section down below if you have any examples of further brands and products that you've seen cost a certain amount of money and now like magically the brands now charge you a smaller amount of money without calling it a sale, without kind of scratching off the initial price and writing the reduced price underneath. We're not talking about sales, we're talking about full-blown price decrease. If you have any examples, please do let me know down below. You know what I mean? Uh, so, you know. Oh, Dean DiCaprio says in the, in the, in the chats, Louis Vuitton continues to stop their pre-orders to lower their prices. Ah, isn't that an interesting point as well? So I'm telling you now, expect in the future to see more and more of this. This is a little bit dangerous for the brands because if more and more of us consumers become aware of this, we're going to stop buying because we're going to think, well, hold on, let me poker this out. Let, let me wait let me wait a little bit because like if I don't buy the product now and I wait another couple of weeks, then it's going to be cheaper. And then we're all going to be sitting waiting for the prices to go down and nobody's going to buy anymore. So the brands have to play this very strategically and very safely so that the people still keep buying as this process happens. How do you do that, though? That's what I'm telling you. It's like walking on a minefield. But at the same time, they got to keep making revenues. Some of these brands have shareholders. They're on the stock market. Other brands are privately owned. Chanel is still privately owned, while LVMH, Louis Vuitton, belongs to LVMH. They have shareholders. They got to respond to their shareholders. If they don't deliver the percentages of revenues every year, the shareholders are going to start selling the, the stock. If the stock gets sold, Bernard Arnault wants to buy whatever's there, like to be like, oh my God, let me save the, you know, the value of this brand by buying the stock myself. But other than that... You can plummet a brand that way. So they got to play it very safely and strategically while still keeping selling, but at the same time, making it again affordable to the aspirational customer, which is the customer that most of these luxury brands have alienated in the past couple of years totally from their roster. Now they're realizing, oh, oopsie, the 1% rich are not that dumb after all. Just because they got all that money doesn't mean that they're going to spend all that money on trash. Alleged trash, right? So we, we need the aspirational client after all, don't we? Let me know down below if you have any examples. Dean DiCaprio says, Goya has dropped some prices on their Saint Louis tote. It magically just changed. Not by much, but it's slower. Well, thank you for letting me know, Dean. I'm going to have to check out, you know, the receipts. But so there you go. Allegedly, we also have Goya lowering prices, decreasing magically prices. I'm telling you, you're going to see more and more of this happening. So keep an eye out. And my tip to you is don't let the FOMO get to you so quickly like you used to let it get to you in the past. 
I say let's poker this out, people. We the consumer. Let's get our wallets back in our own hands. Let's poker this one out, you know. There you go. Kev says, in an interesting comment, says, in a way, no price increases is almost like another form of price reduction because they're not like upping them every six to seven months. I mean, you could see it that way as well. But then again, it's not like our salaries are going up either. So, you know, it should be better than just no price increase. I still believe there should be decreases instead um you know what i mean rather than just like staying like at that kind of level where nothing decreases but kev what was that brand where you saw the uh did you leave it in the chats higher up the the brand or did you talk to me a couple of weeks ago saying that it went down in price you were looking at a, at a price tag of a certain brand and um you were kind of upset because you bought it at a higher price and then you saw that the price was reduced kev ah you meant burberry Oh, there you go. <laughs> well, we'll go, we'll go. If Kev says it. <laughs> no, Kev says my Celine bag went down, but that was three years ago even. All right. Well, you guys, until next time, let me know your thoughts and prayers down below. Subscribe and thumb up the video. Bye. Now, isn't that a doozy? Because I think this is a very interesting topic, raising awareness about this, uh, letting more people know. I, the McDonald's video did quite well, but the McDonald's video was McDonald's. And a lot of people didn't understand, wouldn't click on it because they thought, well, what does that have to do with fashion? Now I'm going to make this video that is specifically catered to luxury fashion. So more people are going to click on it. And the more people click on it, the more uh, awareness we're going to raise about this. Because, I mean, if we have an opportunity here to get brands to decrease their prices uh, then decrease the prices by all means <laughs> you know we got over 200 people watching we got 180 likes come on you guys let's get to at least 200 250 likes the chat is dead why is the chat dead Was this topic so boring, you guys? Let me know. The move we stop, uh, the more we stop paying for the ridiculous prices, the more effective it is to have these prices decrease. Louis Vuitton got a huge hit with their Kuzama collection in a negative way when their sales dropped. Yeah, and it did not sell out. Gloria says, Jacob, this reminds me of the news that Wendy's fast food was thinking of doing surge pricing till there was backlash. So uh, the thought is Corp America is out there. Yeah, and they're trying to do this now. They're announcing that they're going to try to do this just like with Uber. This is terrible, by the way. In America, they're trying to introduce this new system where if a fast food joint, example, like let's say McDonald's, uh, if, if they're having a lot of traffic, they're going to raise the price of the burger. So like if they have a ton of people buying at 4 p.m., then their price is going to jump at 4 p.m. from like $5 to $10 for a burger. And then in the evening, when they sell less, the price of the burger might go down to $3. I hope that doesn't happen. That would be terrifying. I hope that does not happen because that would be really, really terrible. Jolie says, no, the subject is perfect. Thank you, Jolie. Barbara says, hi, nice to have you. Nice to be here with you. I noticed the same jacket from Burberry, $1,550 was more at Nordstrom, $1,790 than on their website. It, there you go. That's because Nordstrom probably bought it before they decreased the price. Classic example. Yup says, why is... <laughs> Yab is asking, why is Sophie Shohet copying your content? Well, allegedly, right? I would say she's copying, if she is copying my content, she's doing it because my content is fabulous. I don't have a problem with her copying my content. I do have a problem with her not crediting me. That would be nice. If, if, if Sophie Shohet gave a shout out from time to time, that would be kind of lovely. Wouldn't you agree? If indeed she is taking my content allegedly of course we got to say um you know but it does happen that youtubers make similar content from time to time without knowing it that the other ones are making it but if somebody kind of is a repeat perpetrator you're like wait hold on a minute you've been doing this a lot lately <laughs> then it's a different story so there you go hi jesse how's it going sweetie Oh, thank you, Vicence. Vicence loves the outfit. Thank you. Old school Moschino from 2015. Um, DD Bean says, that's crazy. Search pricing for food? Absolutely not. Well, America. Yeah. 
Wendy's is doing that, says Katana. Oh, jeez, says Debbie. Dean says, I love your topics. These uh, these are very informative and useful. Remember, gas prices during COVID, that's because no one drove. So we have the power in some way. We do have the power. Our wallets speak volumes to these corporations because they only know the language of the dollar or of the money or whatever monetary system you're using. Happy hour burgers, Jackie. And I live for those. <laughs> I live for the burger. Kev says, that's insanity. Yeah. Crazy Cat Lady Joe. Hi, Dick. with everybody. Hi, Crazy Cat Lady. Stephanie M., your content is fabulous. Thank you, Stephanie. Uh, yeah, I was like, you heard him, Miss Sophie. <laughs> Dean DiCaprio says, guys, remember, replicas as the easiest way of flattery. So uh, copying you is because she wants to be you, LOL. Well, I mean, maybe she's just out of ideas and she thinks this. Also, you guys, also all of these kind of like bigger luxury youtubers also realizing like unboxings really because times are changing we're tired of it we don't care anymore to see you unbox yet another dior bag or whatever bag mm. so now they're like uh-oh they have to reinvent themselves what are we gonna do what are we gonna do and i'm literally the only one on youtube that deals with luxury fashion and fashion the way i do Nobody else does it really. Now there's kind of more people are going into it and are, you know, because luxury fashion on YouTube is relatively young as a topic, as a niche. So it's evolving, you know, we're growing, we're adding more topics, we're adding more type of ways of conversing about it, talking about it, educating each other about it. But a couple of years ago, because it was all brand new territory, everything about it was exciting. So unboxing bags was exciting. Doing a thousand videos about what fits in my bag was exciting. Now barely anybody does a video that says what fits in my bag. There was a time 10 years ago or so where what's what fits in my bag was like, you make a video like what fits in my Chanel mini, you would get 30, 40, 50,000 views. Okay. Now you make a video what fits inside my bag and people are like, who cares? <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, you're still going to get views, but it's not, it's not going to have the same impact it used to have a while ago. Same applies to the unboxings. And this is because the market... The YouTube market is saturated. What does this mean? This means that there's way more competition because in these past 10 years, you can imagine how many people in these past 10 years have done the unboxing of the same freaking bag. While 10 years ago, you could say it was still relatively rare to find a video on YouTube about a luxury content creator unboxing a Birkin. Now, after 10 years, you YouTube search Birkin unboxing, you're going to have 5 billion videos popping up. So it's just not that interesting anymore. The market is saturated. Now, while at the same time, I'm still waiting for my Birkin call, and yes, you will be watching my Birkin unboxing once it comes, or not watch it, do whatever you want, but I'm not going to be sitting here doing 25,000 different Birkin unboxings with you. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen once and call it a day. But what I'm saying is we have way more of the same content that keeps piling up year after year. And yeah, sometimes content creators delete their content, but most of the content creators leave their videos online for you to find in the future. So now it's like we have a gazillion of those videos online. So what is new? What's different? How can we cater to what our viewers want to watch that they haven't seen before, but they want to see. And that's where the new topics are coming up and we're finding new ways to communicate with each other. This is where content creators that have kind of fossilized themselves a little bit because they had that security of having a ton of followers and a ton of subscribers, they were in a comfort zone. They were in a bubble for many years because no matter what they would churn out, their viewers would be like blind sheep. They would just go and watch the content. Now people are waking up and realizing, oh, you're not really making an effort to create kind of new content. You're kind of repeating yourself. And so a lot of these bigger channels are stagnating, right? So now they're waking up, you know, they're like, oh, okay, maybe I'm, maybe I shouldn't be that lazy anymore with my content. Let me, but then they're still lazy because then they kind of just, you know, steal other people's content instead. Well, whatever, allegedly. Not mentioning any names. Um, yeah, MC says, Ma uh, Mim, Mim and her 400th unboxing. Well, also a secret for you, a secret for you. Um, 
they maybe want to get away from unboxings. Maybe they want to get away from unboxing, but still need to stay on the luxury topic. As otherwise, they would lose a lot of income, you know, talking about other topics. YouTube pays uh, you more or less depending on the topics you talk about. Did you know that? So, for example, if, if YouTube classifies you as a channel in a certain category, your cost per mil, like CP, CPM rate, like they pay you per thousand views, is higher than if you talk about other topics. So, um, my channel has a relatively good standing because I have viewers of a certain age category and luxury. So, YouTube knows that whatever sponsors are going to be playing as you know, those ads that you get that play on their own, they cost more on my channel than they would on, let's say, somebody who is reviewing screwdrivers. So a slot for an advertisement on certain channels costs less than on other channels. In other words, the higher ranking your channel is in terms of viewership and what type of audience you have, what is uh, your the category of your audience, what is the uh, what's it called? Not category. There's a name for it. Uh, not genre. The stats about your viewers. Um, the demographic. What is your viewership demographic? Oh, Uri Bear. Thank you so much, sweetie. Uri Bear donated $10. Saxon 101 is the best econ class. This should be in schools. Debate class and economics. I don't know what... what... <laughs> I think you meant you meant me. You just misspelled my name. Thank you so much, sweetie. Yes, Quinn, 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 Quinn. Papa Cherry, Papa Cherry, TED Talk, TED Talk, and Jacob. <laughs> Thank you, sweetie. Thank you so much. So now we have these demographics, okay? And they're like kind of kicking in on all different corners. So basically, advertisers are competing for a slot for an advertisement slot on your channel, if your channel has a good ranking. So in my case with luxury content and my viewers being of a certain age and a certain demographic, of course, luxury brands want to advertise on my channel. But YouTube says, well, there's only so much space on his channel. You gotta pay more if you want a slot. You see, that's how it works. Channels that usually got the biggest AdSense revenue are the channels that talk about finances. Now, I cannot talk about finances because I haven't studied economy. I'm not a, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in no way, shape or form. I cannot give you any, you know, monetary advice like that because I'm not professional in that way. But the channels that do all that talk about like how to save up money, how to invest your money, how to invest blah, 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 cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, all that stuff. Those are the channels that earn the most, well, in the past, I don't know currently what the best is, but those are the channels just up that just up to about a year or two ago had the highest CPM rates. And some of these channels were open about it and they would like talk about how much revenue they would be generating on a monthly basis. And I was shocked to see some of these channels earning like, you know, $50,000 a month. You know what I mean? Like for not so many views as other channels would get that earn less. So this is something very fascinating to note. So you can imagine that maybe MIM or other luxury content creators out there, maybe they also think, okay, you know, I'm, I get it. I get the message. Maybe unboxing yet another Birkin is not really what my, you know, viewers want to see, but I haven't invested a lot of time in diversifying my luxury content all these years. And now I'm like, uh oh, I got to learn this profession all over again. How do I find ways to talk about luxury to maintain my status on YouTube in form of how much revenue I generate? So I got to keep topics that are lux luxury based, but I got to learn how to talk about luxury in a different way than just unboxing bags. You see what I mean? And that does not come easy or natural to everybody. So this is why I'm kind of not surprised that some bigger channels are kind of looking at my content thinking, huh, you know what I mean? Now, will they be capable to maintain that level of conversation for a longer period of time? Remains to be seen because 
in my humble opinion, most of those channels have sold out. You know, the sponsorships. Here's the bag stuffer. Here's, here's the bag stuffer. Here's this little fake crystal jewelry piece that I'm going to show to you and I'm going to try to sell it. Those are... Those types of sponsorships ultimately lead to your, not all, but in my humble opinion, to a very big chunk of your viewers losing trust in you long term. So now, how are you going to rebuild your reputation on YouTube if you know that the unboxings are not really hitting it anymore? You got to reinvent yourself and now you're going to start analyzing the business of luxury fashion, but while at the same time, having a track record of you, you know, uh, endorsing sponsorships that are trash. So you kind of show your audience that you sold yourself, you sold your soul to the devil, in other words, but now you want to start a conversation where, you, when you're tell, where you're telling people where it's at and how it's done and how it's morally correct to do this or that. I'm like, that doesn't fly. That doesn't fly. You have to completely revisit your, your image, you gotta, you, in other words, you need to go to a good PR company and you need them to completely reinvent your, your image. Um, Dean DiCaprio says, I meant to put Dacob 101 on the donation, LOL. Oh, Dean DiCaprio, thank you, sweetie. No, I understood you meant Dacob, yeah. <laughs> but Saxon is fun too. Uh, pardon me, Vsen says, you are so knowledgeable. Teach me the tricks of YouTube. You can be my YouTube mother. Uh, thank you, Vicent. <laughs> I think you're really good on your own already, you know. Oh, thanks, Debbie. Debbie says, don't be stingy, people. Give a free thumbs up to take up to the live stream. Thank you, guys. Jolie says, some of them are moving to finance information. Yes, I've seen. And that also because talking about finances gives you more re revenue. Dean says, this live should be a classroom. No joke. This is fascinating for sure. Thank you, Dean. Very kind of you. So there's no reason to keep it hidden. You guys should know what it's all about. It's a business, but there's ways of communicating with your viewers, with your clients. You can be honest to them. Why all this secrecy? Why all this manipulation? It makes me so annoyed and irritated. We're entering a new age where the consumer is much more aware of what is going on because the consumer wants to be informed, wants to be aware. So why... You know, I'm sick and tired of this. Like, here's a leather Chanel bag unboxing. But first, let me show you the sponsor of the day. And then I show you some ratchet piece of shit that I would never buy personally. Okay. But here I am selling it to you. And then once I'm done with a 20 minute talk about that, let me go back to the actual Chanel unboxing of the product that I actually want to buy, that I actually want to spend money on. But but you, but you, you, you can buy the shitty thing that, that sponsored me, you know. Because that gives me the money to keep buying the stuff that I really want to buy, which is the Chanel stuff that I'm unboxing for you. It's a little bit of a vicious circle as well, because a lot of these luxury content creators kind of fall into that vicious circle of like, uh oh, I got to keep doing these sponsorships because otherwise I can't afford to keep buying so much of this branded stuff to unbox. Because that's what my viewers want to watch in some cases, right? And so it's easy to fall into that addiction in a way, you know? So I, I'm not here blaming these other content creators, but I'm here raising awareness about it. And maybe, just maybe, if they're watching me, maybe this helps them as well. Just saying. To each their own, you know. Deb Shops says, yes, I used to sell advertising for a living. You have a good demo. Luxury lovers are a coveted audience. Finance does well because the viewers of that content tend to be reaching a college-educated demo. There you go. And you know we keep it real here. So you know you know when I talk to you, I talk from the heart and I say what I really think. And I'm not going to be saying like, oh, I don't really think this, but I'm going to say it anyway just because uh, I guess it's more socially acceptable. It's more advertiser friendly. No, we keep it mighty real here because at the end of the day, guess what? If you're honest with your customer, with your client, and you're honest about your product, they will trust you and then they will spend with you. That's always how it works. There's no reason to lie to people. Sooner or later, lies have short legs. They're going to find out, and then that's it. Once your reputation is done, it's done, baby. Okay? So, you know. Deb says, uh, yes, they are ripping off your content. They will have to broaden their content if they want to keep viewers. So, I'm so over unboxing. Well, they're ripping off my content, and I've noticed it. And I have to say again, allegedly. But like I said... 
if that's all you can do because you're too lazy to do your own research and you're ripping off my content and you feel like you got to do it, at least credit me. The least. Just have that moral decency. Because look, I'm not coming to you guys telling you people are ripping me off. You are coming to me in my chats telling me, hey, Jacob, you are raising awareness, telling me, hey, Jacob, look, this person and that person copied you. And this is interesting to me. I'm not here sitting, being all angry about these other people. I, you know, couldn't care less. Just like Coco Chanel would always say, she's like, uh, oh, you're talking all about me? He's like, I don't care about you. I never think about you. So, you know what I mean? There's that. But what I'm trying to say here is you are raising awareness about them copying me, not me. You are telling me that, which means that you on your own, without me telling you anything, you on your own have found out that they are copying me. This further ruins their reputation because you're, you're, you're like, oh, look, they're sneaky. They're kind of stealing, snatching, doing da 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 That just ruins their reputation. Instead, they could have just been honest about it, given out a shout out to say, oh, by the way, Jacob also spoke about this really interesting topic. So I'm going to chime in my two cents on this as well. Then there, you know, thank you for becoming a member of Crazy Cat Lady Joe, tier one. Thank you, sweetie. Then you do not blemish your own reputation because you're actually sitting there honest to your viewers. You're not acting like, hey, look, I invented the wheel. Okay. I invented the wheel here, girl. You see what I mean? That honesty is something that a lot of these bigger content creators they, they've never learned, to be honest, because from the moment that they started creating content, it's been fake. You know what I mean? It's been selling you this product, that product, advertisement here on Instagram and there, pushing certain products. So they've just learned to communicate that way. They've never learned to communicate honestly. Now, but now we're entering a time where honesty is important, where people are valuing more the truthfulness. And all of a sudden, a lot of these people, they're just handicapped. Because they, they don't know how to be honest. I mean, it's really sad if you think about it. Really sad. Jolie Simple Opinion, member for six months, tier two. Thank you, my love. Super Chat says, and this is why this is the only channel that I subscribe to. Jolie, thank you, my love. So just to be very clear here, why am I saying this? Because you guys brought it up. I didn't bring this up. You guys brought it up with a question about Sophie and stuff. Like I said, uh, I wish them all the, all, the, all the good in the world, all the best in the world, all the success in the world. Um... I think more transparency would be nice for, from these people and just honesty and decency. Like, why are you gatekeeping something? What are you afraid of? What insecurity, what insecurity is going on in, in your mind that, that, that you have to gatekeep stuff? Like, it makes no sense. Ellie, thank you so much, my love. Ellie donated $20. You are great, Jacob. Thank you for great content and education. Thank your you, my love. Your are the best. Aww. Thank you. Thank you, sweetie. Last stream. We always last stream. That's what we do here on the stream. Thank you, Papa Cherry. <laughs> Thank you, sweetie. Claudia von B. Oh, wait. Holly Grace says, Jesse Style has some of the best commentary videos out there at the moment. Jesse Style is a dear friend of mine, and she's amazing. Go subscribe to her channel. Jesse is just amazing. She also has good, solid morals. She does do from time to time some sponsorships, but you guys, I know Jesse personally, the sponsorships that she does do, she's really excited about. I know because we have our private conversations. We're friends. She's always excited. She's like, Jacob, look, they sent me this. I'm really enjoying it. Like she's such a sweetheart, very, very honest soul and extremely knowledgeable when it comes to fashion, style, aesthetics, quality. You can trust Jesse, period. Crazy Cat Lady Joe says, I bet they don't know fashion history like you. Well, there's that. Claudia von B says, this is why we love your channel, Jacob. Thank you. From fashion to literature to makeup and perfume, jewelry, history of the fashion houses. Honestly, the best channel around. Thank you for that. Thank you so much, Claudia von B. Speaking of books and lit literature, speaking of literature, I just found out that I, I don't know where it is because I travel a lot. Maybe it's in another one of you know the places that I stay at. Um, I could not find... Uh, my uh, The Catcher in the Rye, J.D. Salinger book. So I reordered it. I want to reread it. I, because, speaking of literature, The Catcher in the Rye, 
uh, just a quick note here, a very fascinating because mostly all of the big literature books of history, not just American ones, European ones, well, you know, all over the world, blah, blah, blah. Usually, sooner or later, they're made into a movie. Except, did you know that J.D. Salinger was like so against it? Once in the past, many moons ago, he allowed one book to be turned into a movie. Terrible flop, hated it. And they said, never again. And then The Catcher in the Rye was published. And Hollywood was all up in his business until his dying day, begging him, upping the offer, upping the money. Salinger kept saying, no, no, no. The Catcher in the Rye was never allowed to be turned into a movie. And now uh, J.D. Salinger's son it talks about it and says, you know, this is really good because had it been turned into a movie, the generations that would watch the movie instead of reading the book would always associate... Oh, holy grace, thank you so much, sweetie. Wait, hold on, I have to finish this before we do it. Terry, I'll be with you in just a second. And the son, and the son said, um, you know, uh, if had uh, The Catcher in the Rye been turned into a, uh, into a movie, um, we would have, uh, all the generations growing up would associate whatever actor acted, you know, Holden in the movie, they would think that that's Holden. But my dad didn't want anybody to associate any specific person to that character. They, he wanted you as a reader to identify either yourself or somebody that you envision in your mind to be that character. Not having some actor, you know, kind of ruin it for you. He wants the freedom of imagination to roam free. And I think that is such a beautiful gesture. And I'm so glad that The Catcher in the Rye was indeed not turned into a movie. I close that literature parenthesis. Go read the book. It's amazing. I've reordered my copy of it. Now, Terry, back to you, my love. Teresa McGuire just gifted five Super Deco memberships. Holy Grace was gifted a membership by Teresa McGuire. Baby Firefly was gifted a membership by Teresa McGuire. Jisoa was gifted a membership by Teresa McGuire. Julie San was gifted a membership by Teresa McGuire. Kimberly Schreiber was gifted a membership by Teresa McGuire. There you go. Thank you, Terry, and welcome to all the new Tier 1 members. Literature parenthesis closed. Pardon me. Uh, Oriole Beagle says, Jacob is an excellent teacher. Thank you, Oriole. Very kind of you. I just love to share stuff that I'm passionate about. Uh, Holy Grace says, I'm sick of the sponsors. I'm sick of the lack of personal style. I'm sick of the clones. I'm sick of the sale vlogs before they commence the cycle again. Yeah, I know. It's really annoying. It's like luxury. That's all that you get on luxury YouTube. It's 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 really kind of ugh, really annoying. Thank you, Heaven. Hi, Heaven. How's it going, sweetie? Giving credit is so important. Thank you, sweetie. Um, Vsan says, I got offered a sponsorship for one of those perfumes that uh, attracts women, girl, by Acha. <laughs> Vsan. And this is another thing, like, you know, I, I love Erin Parsons. I think she's a very sweet lady, you know, the makeup artist on TikTok. But then, like, she starts doing those, like, fragrant order, like, abonnement things, which are so shady. She accepted the sponsorship. I'm like, girl, you already have money. You have enough money. Why do you, like weird sponsorships with like companies i'm like wow ooh, that damages her reputation in my eyes because now i trust her less because she went with a sponsorship from one of the one of those i'm not even going to mention the the uh i'm not even going to mention the abonama perfume things that she's doing not cool at all uh bryn to uh to Bense and uh patrick dicaprio hey jacob we love you and you are always invited to a vaquera show in paris ah thank you so much my love thank you Oh, Paris. You know, I've been thinking of flying into Paris just to buy Comet. <laughs> a little Chanel moment. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to be that crazy person flying over to to, to Paris just because Chanel! they released... Exactly. Because they released the perfume before elsewhere. Anyway, hi, Donna Mazzotti. How's it going? Ah, Barbara says, love the catcher in the rye. Well, you know, it is a masterpiece for a reason. But uh, so anyway, Daniela says, I feel like those kind of inner journey books aren't easy to adapt as well. Well, no, for sure. But the fact that he vetoed it, I, I found it very classy in a way. You know what I mean? So crazy cat lady, Joe. Yes, I'm not going to say it. You said it. I like to listen to you talk about. Th there you go. Talking about it. Yeah, exactly. Now, let's go to the crazy show. 
in Milan Fashion Week. We are going to review. Of course, like I said, we're winning this house. Oh, five for nothing. Thank you so much, my love. Five FD nothing donated $50. Thank you for keeping it real. I love your honesty. Thank you so much, my love. Honesty is the best policy. Honesty is always the best policy. Bum, bum, hit the bubbles. Mm -hmm. We just love that little kissy kissy from that little tiny AI bot, don't we? <laughs> Thank you, Five Foot Nothing. Very kind of you. We are going to review a crazy show. Well, not that crazy. Is it crazy? We'll be the judge of that. Like I said, we're weaving this tapestry. And we are heading off to the Avavav. Can somebody help me pronounce this thing? Is it A-V-A-V? Is it A-V-A-V-A? A-V-A-V-A-V? Or is it Avavav? A-V-A-V-A-V? Or Avavav? Come on, Kev. Tell me how to pronounce this thing because otherwise we're going to, you know. I think we're just going to say A-V-A-V-A-V. -A -V -A -V. Debbie's like, what the heck? I know. I know. I am Confucian. Yes. I think it's A-V-A-V. -A -V -A -V -A -V -A -V. Maybe it's on purpose complicated to pronounce. Just say Abba. <laughs> oh, man. Do you hear the drums, Fernando? But yeah, so anyway, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna we'll go, we'll go. What is it? I'm I'm just gonna say A V A V. Abba Reverend, I know, I know. There you go, Deb. Oh, really? Rhea says it's just pronounced A V. Okay. Just AV? All right. Are you sure? Because otherwise, you know, if I if I mispronounce it, then they're gonna like come for me, obviously, because I don't really. I'll do all of the, I'll do all the versions. I'll do all the versions. All right. Um Okay. The other AVs are silent. Yes, yeah, pronounced AV. Okay. Oh. All right. Mm -hmm. Oh, we don't. Okay. Hi, everybody. Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. We are at Milan Fashion Week, and today we're going to review the AV Fall Winter 2024 show. Yes, spelled A V A V A V. Some call it Avavavavav, Avavavavum. Some say A V. Well, anyway, the artistic director behind it is uh, Beate Karlsson from Sweden, darling. And we're going to review the show. If you remember, maybe a season ago, the runway was all about falling apart clothes, falling apart runway. Everything just fell apart by the end of the show. It was all done on purpose, obviously. Very provocative, thought-provoking. Now, this season, Beate... Sing really? Beate Carlson has created... A kind of a response to all the comments that her latest creations were have been given online, meaning the hate comments. So we're going to watch a show in which she projects the hate comments and all the troll comments that she got, like on the back of the wall where the fashion model, where the, where the fashion show is running. So you get to see all the hate comments while the new collection is being shown in kind of a trash setting, trash scenario. So it's kind of provocative, thought provoking, fashion as connected to the policy of, well, hate speech in this case, making you think about where fashion is heading towards, how are we going to deal with fashion in the future, or how is fashion going to deal with us in the future? The concept of commerce of fashion and how much is it a corporate thing, you know, Mm. So, we in the video, we cannot read the comments as they are too far away, but it's still a new brand, low budget, you know, one camera, very simple fashion show filmed camera. But I do have uh, here on my little iPad, I do, I will go to the AV Instagram account and there, uh, there are some close up pictures where I can actually read a couple of those hate comments. But the hate comments are the classic, you know, oh my God, this is so cringe, this is so boring, I can't believe, this is a travesty, you know, the classics, the classics we all as content creators get. So 
to maybe be a little bit Miranda from The Devil Wears Prada. I was like, you know, I, I wanted to tell to Beate, oh, you got hate speech for your fashion show. Groundbreaking. You know what I mean? A little bit lame because true, we all get hate all the time. People, people want to unalive me on a daily basis, honey. Get in line. Wait your turn to read your hate comments because mine are, I'm sure, worse than yours. All right. So anyway, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Push the join button next to the subscription button. Become a member today. Gain access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon. Super Day Cabal spelled together as well for extra perks. This video is being filmed live in front of a live virtual audience. I live stream several times a week, so come join the fun in the chats. Hi to my co-chators. Everything I say in this video is for entertainment purposes only, not rooted in truths or facts. Everything's alleged and just my opinion. All right, AV, let's see what you got. The video is from their YouTube channel, falls under fair use because we're reviewing it. I just put on my audio, which is uh, not their audio because their audio is copywritten. Let's go. So as you can see back on the back, you see scrolling are the hate comments and some of them are saying cringe, this and that, blah, blah, blah. So you can also check them out on Instagram and there you can see kind of some of the close-ups of those hate comments that are scrolling in the back So you can see it's still low-budget production one camera filming the whole show. It's very minimal very simple now I gotta say though it is streetwear. There are some leather pieces like those boots, right? I I've already watched scenes snippets and we're gonna watch it now together again and there are a couple of pieces from this collection I'm gonna tell you right now usually I don't say it before we've reviewed them but there are a couple of pieces that I wouldn't mind having there is a level of mm, kind of almost activism here you know I, I wouldn't I wouldn't push it so far to say this is at a level of pure activism like Vivian Westwood used to be but mm, there is a conceptual activist type of vibe going on here you know and uh, youth culture. Oh, by the way, also Eastpack collaborated with AV for this collection. So a lot of the bags and the backpacks are gonna be Eastpack with AV. So when these collaborations begin with other brands and the smaller brand, then you know that the brand is up and coming. You know what I mean? When like bigger brands come and start doing collabs. You know. I love this. This model is like zombie couture, baby. Live it fast. Yeah, yes, Quinn. <laughs> I'm sure they were feeling their oats. And like for us, it's like, oh, okay, they're not really walking too professionally, but it doesn't matter. It's so endearing. It has character. I kind of love the walk. Okay, so these pieces that have these kind of like weird kind of cross-like shapes uh, that are kind of connected. You see like a, it's like a tie. Very fascinated by the hoodie that has a shirt texture instead of a... Um, a kind of a, a, a thicker woven texture and then it's a shirt with a type of hoodie with a tie and the tie is like a weird drop or cross fascinating almost referencing a little bit you know the Pierre Cardin era <laughs> and now the trash starts being thrown at the piece so this is kind of so it's a little bit goth you see the models have curvier shapes love it I'm so happy that the models look more natural Debbie in the chat says WTF. Uh, Debbie, it's all intentional. Don't get scared, sweetie. The, the, the garbage parts, it's 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 part of the show. Um, so you see what I mean? This, it's a little bit Y2K. Okay, this little piece definitely giving us Y2K vibes. Unfortunately, even AV is not completely free from the trends of the times. I would have wished a little bit less Y2K. Um, but then there's a lot of these kind of unisex pieces, you know, this could be worn by a man, by a woman, doesn't really matter. There you go, the East Pack baglet, that little logo on the bag is East Pack. I like the curvature of it. Hoodies, 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 youth culture, partying. I mean, would we go to a club with this? Yes, and I do believe quite a few of those kind of youth, more younger generations, youth culture oriented are gonna wear this stuff to go out and about. I'm not so sure what the price category and the price range is. I'm gonna to have to check that out online. The hoodie. <laughs> it's not like we haven't seen hoodies that are kind of overly done like this, you know. Unfortunately, Balenciaga comes to mind. Oh, damn, nah. Yeah. The poverty. Um, you see that tie? Is it a tie? Is it a necklace? Kind of, it could be also, what, a key hanger, ch chain, something. With the shirt. 
I wouldn't mind having that tie. I also wouldn't mind having this shirt with the hoodie. The pants, no, not for me. I'm not skinny or tall enough to be able to pull them off. I would just look like a blob in those pants. Now, I'm not saying that we're working with the most refined textures and materials available to mankind, but it doesn't matter. You know, a brand has potential, a lot of press coverage. In fact, piqued my interest as well. Here we are reviewing it. Also part of Milan Fashion Week, and we were just reviewing other collections. So fascinating how these sunglasses are called the Panda sunglasses, which are already available for purchase on the AV website, by the way. They are 3D printed somewhere in Paris, I think. It's a wow. Is that a weave? Or is that real hair? Whatever it is, oh my god, it's like liquid gold, livid. Um, so we've, we've reviewed quite a few shows from the Milan Fashion Week, and it's interesting how fashion, the fashion tapestry is all over the place, you know, like from Top Ford to Bottega Veneta to Moschino to Versace to this. They're all very, very different messages and very different target groups as well. Very Y2K. I mean, we are completely still obsessed with the early 2000s, aren't we? This is giving me kind of Dolce Gabbana 2003, 2002. You know, Heaven says, I like some of the styles. I'm not going to lie. I'm weird. No, I'm also enjoying it quite a bit. You know, sure, we've seen punk. We've seen this. We've seen tie dye. This is nothing new, but I still kind of like it within the context in which it's shown, you know, in a backdrop of hate speech and on, a, and, and on this runway that's becoming more and more garbage polluted and they're just like, boo, boo, you know, it's... It kind of works. It, it's delivering some sort of freedom, some sort of just like, you know what, I don't care. The sad thing about all of this is, though, as interesting as this is, usually brands like these, either they end up becoming super popular, that then they become corporate and they lose all of their edginess. They lose all of their interesting, you know, forward thinking, blah, 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 isms. Or they sell, you know, to a bigger company, to a bigger corporation. And then, of course, they become completely streamlined. So this is why I'm saying it's kind of sad because these brands, like, they're still not working on a big <laughs> they hate where they're still not working on a big budget now to deliver what they really could so it's kind of like low low budget but once they become famous and they could really deliver the crazy stuff then they're going to become conservative potentially so that's kind of the sadness of all of this this is kind of the youth of a brand at its inception and while it's still young i'm just saying enjoy it enjoy it for all its imperfections while they're still at the beginning, you know what I mean? Because once they become established, you lose a lot of the zhuzh, you lose a lot of the lasta. Potentially, potentially. Vicent says, did Anna Winter get hit by a rotten apple? I'm not gonna say that Anna Winter is the rotten apple, but uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna, and I did not say it, because I didn't want to say it. <laughs> you know. So anyway, I'm kind of living for the East Pack baglets that look like little tiny butts, like little, or, or like brats, pendulous brats or butts. Gothic vibes, you know, but also kind of like a futuristic vision of, of, I don't know, some music band. Um, Kev says, not an advertiser, so Anna would never go, says Kev. Oh, interesting point. Look at that. So they, they literally put textile over the feet as if it were as if they were boots. That's interesting. I'm, I mean, it's terrible to wear, probably really uncomfortable, but orange. Also, the cutouts on the sides, long skirt. I like the look. I mean, yeah, sure, we've seen Balenciaga do similar stuff, and of course Balenciaga is still cancelled in my book. So seeing this is still kind of echoing too much of what Demna has been already doing for years. But uh, I do believe that there's a there's something also new here. Like, for example, these ties with these little weird crosses, you know, that kind of is a break from what we've seen, you know, done by Demna. And it kind of gives me a little bit more of a twist it doesn't give me just pure trash, you know, like anti-everything, but it kind of also develops a uh, an aesthetical language there. This is giving me also mid-90s. Dolce Gabbana, when they did D&G, the sale part, the shirt with the sale, also D&G logo classic for D&G back in the day. Also the color combos, very first half of the 90s, 
more youthful collections because as we know D&G is a more youthful collection it's like Mew Mew instead of being Prada or instead of being Dolce Gabbana or like Emporio Armani for example being that kind of sub brand more accessible price wise for that so called aspirational customer loving this piece believe it or not that top I want it I would look hideous in it but I want it and I love the red with the orange combo <laughs> I love orange and red combined, and I also love pink and a red combined, and I also love pink and orange combined. Those three combos I live for. Little lilac -y shirt moment. Yes, she knows how to walk a runway. Love that collar, that the collar of the shirt is also the extension of the hoodie. Very, very interesting cut there. That the collar is part of the hoodie, but it's a collar. Love it. The white version. I think this one is going to get very colored with all the uh, the trash. No, they're going to let her. Ah, there you go. Uh huh. And now we have a little bit of that Alexandra McQueen referencing. You remember, you guys, the famous model in the circular space turning around and the robots with spray paint. That was like sophisticated technology, the future of technology. Alexandra McQueen. It's almost like. Beat is referencing that, but like saying, we're done with technology. Just throw the trash on the dress with your own hands. And I love the rawness of it. I love that it's kind of referencing Alexander McQueen. Maybe, I don't know if this was, you know, intentional or not, but it did remind me of the McQueen moment with the spray paint robot spray painting on the model. But I love the fact that, <laughs> I guess, like, whatever, girl. Bah. Oh, there's my favorite one, the zombie. You go, girl. Don't fall. Don't fall. Be careful, ladies. Be careful. Yeah, there you go. I wish I would have seen more round models, but some of them were a little bit more round. So that's better than nothing. And we do have a variety I see. Well, not too much of a variety, but we do have some skin textures going on there as well. Could have had some more even, but I liked it. I, you know, sure, it, it, it's, it's, it's kind of, oh no. Are you okay? Okay, she seems okay. It, you know, it's it's very high school project, you know, it's very much like, whatever, we'll go, we'll go. But uh, there's an honesty to it, and there's something very endearing about it. I'm, I'm happy with this collection. You will go, we'll go. <laughs> this was hi, Beate. She's like, yeah. <laughs> She's like, oh. <laughs> you see? This is what I love about a young brand. She does not take herself seriously. Of course, this was all planned. The guy was gonna, or whatever, the person was gonna come and throw the cake in her face. That was all intentional. It was part of the joke. It's almost giving me the vibes uh, that uh, Betsy Johnson would give us. I mean, she would do her cartwheels at the end of every show to make it lighthearted. And uh, I, I love the fact, oh, Mac, oh, there you go, Mac did the makeup. So you see the brand is growing. So I love the fact that, um, that she didn't take herself seriously. And that's the beauty of fashion at the end of the day. That That's what it should be. Just we'll go, we'll go. You know what I mean? We'll go, we'll go. So Beate, you got my support. You know, at least it's not pretentious, says Holly Grace. Five foot nothing says, I like it. Something different finally. You know, so there you go. Uh, Grace Chen says, well, who was that first lady who stood up? Oh, that was one of the invited guests with the panda glasses. The panda glasses are also from AV, by the way. Katana says, I don't like it. And that is also good, Katana. A show like this is meant to be not liked. The, all of the hate speeches in the background uh, that are scrolling by, that whole anti-vibe uh, is what the collection is all about. If it kind of makes you feel some type of a say, like, Ugh. You're repulsed by it. That's exactly its intention. And within that intention, I think it was quite successful. It could have gone way more gross and way more anti-everything. I, I feel like as opposed to the collection we've seen prior to this one where everything was falling apart, this one was already becoming more commercial friendly than the collection that was done a season prior. But let me know your thoughts down below. And uh, Beate Carlson, I mean, if you want to send a hoe, a little sign, sign, I will wear it. Let a girl know. Let me know because I'm enjoying the pieces quite a bit. Uh, Deb Shop says, I thought it was different and fun. Heaven says, I could do the black hooded dress. Ha, there you go. There you go. 
So, <laughs> Ollie says, double dare Nickelodeon vibes. Well, I love me some good old school Nickelodeon vibes. The only thing missing here was the slime. Love you loads. Take care until next time. Let me know your thoughts down below. Subscribe and never give up on love. Thumb up the video. Jacob's gonna get a pie in his face. <laughs> yeah, right, that's, that's what she's gonna send me. A rotting pie instead of a shirt. MMM says, please review more shows like this. MMM, videos like these get no views. Unfortunately, because most people prefer to watch Haute Mode review fashion shows. Okay, he gets millions of views. When I post a review of a fashion show, I get barely a thousand views. Nobody wants to see me review fashion shows. Or the algorithm, just uh, the YouTube algorithm just doesn't show me to the right people. So there you go. Crazy Cat Lady Joe says, I really liked it, except the liquid garbage. Oh, well, you know, we'll go, we'll go. <laughs> we'll go, we'll go. Heaven says, I've had my age growing up and my kids Nickelodeon age. I refuse to grow up. I refuse to grow up too, honey. I love love being that Peter Pan for the rest of eternity. Terry says, all these shows bring back the memories. I loved walking the runway. Yeah, Terry, right? The good vibes, good vibes. Mm. Ah. <laughs> Kev, not hot limole. Can't deny that he has really good success on YouTube. We keep it real. He does. He has millions. You know. Um, all right. We need to uh, do a little special giveaway now. Bubbles. Bubbles. I would like to give away five membership bubbles. Can you please make it happen, Bubbles? Bubbles is working on it. We'll go, we'll go. Are you ready, guys? Bubbles is going to give away five memberships randomly. Tier one memberships. Um, Holly Grace says, it would be cool to organize a meetup one day. I need some fashion friends. My love people who get it. Holly, you and me together. I am also a loner. My dose of fashion I get with you guys uh, in the live streams. Otherwise, I'm just all alone doing my research, reading my books and, you know, listening to stuff. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a lonely life. But I'm surrounded by gorgeous perfumes and clothes. Ah, here we go. Thank you, Bubbles. Super Jacob and Bubbles gifted five Super Jacob memberships. Lux84 was gifted a membership by Super D. Debbie was gifted a membership by yours truly. You're welcome, Debs. Thank you. Chucky Shoes UK was gifted a membership by Super D. Elise was gifted a membership by Super D. Maria Hess was gifted a membership by Super D. Yours truly. Welcome to all the new tier one members. A little gift from me to you, my loves. Chat stopped for me. Ah, Terry, my love. Terry says, I'll match. I'll match those membership. Oh, Terry. Thank you, my love. Terry just gifted. Teresa McGuire just gifted five Super Deco memberships. Naru was gifted a membership by Teresa McGuire. JJ was gifted a membership by Teresa McGuire. Vanessa Consalves was gifted a membership by Teresa McGuire. Vanessa, no, sorry. Lera V was gifted a membership by Teresa McGuire. And Deji Delgado was gifted a membership by Teresa McGuire. Welcome to all the new tier one members and thank you, Terry, so much for being so generous and supportive and uh, of the fashion bank. Of the fashion bank. <laughs> Ellie says, Terry, you are the best. Debbie says, thanks, Jacob. Thank you, Debbie. For being a member, for being a mod, for being a friend, for being the God. 
<laughs> it's the new version of the Golden Girls theme song, okay? Thank you for being a friend, but like sung in a more gothic way. So yeah, we'll go, we'll go. What, do we have more? No, that's it. Um, what did I want to say? Oh, and of course, yes, it is Milano, Milano Fashion Week, but... You know, darling, uh, still, even though it's Milan Fashion Week and even though Coco Chanel would not be seen dead in Milano, she still has a couple of things to say. I highly recommend this book by Paul Morand, The Allure of Chanel, which is coincidentally also kind of her autobiography-ish because she kind of said all these things while she was in exile in Switzerland and he was writing it all down and published it after her passing because she didn't want it published while she was alive. This is my personal fashion Bible, okay? Um, you know... Um, so I just want to say a little something. something. I, I got something to say. Okay. Now, there's a lot of interesting things to say here, but I want something that has a conspicuous moment of truth into it, you know. Um, cha, I mean, she says a lot of things that we cannot read out loud here because oh, she gets zesty and spicy. Um, you know, uh, Oh. Mm. oh, there's a chapter about Mesia, but you know, you know, we'll go, we'll go. Rukambon. Um, Tipa, hi Tipa, how's it going? Hi Jacob, hi Bunker. I had a tribal council meeting tonight, so I am late. I will have to catch this all on the replay. All right, sweet. I hope the council, the tribal council meeting went well, you know. I hope everybody was, you know, you know, perky, but, you know, still no discords. <laughs> Katie B says, is he reading from the Bob? <laughs> yeah, the Coke, the Church of Jacob Chanel, right? Yeah, amen. <laughs> the day called. The House of Louis says, that book always gets me. Of course, it's the best. Best fashion Gloria says, oh, Jacob, how about opening it randomly to see what Chanel wants to say? Uh, but some of these, but then you you have to read a whole chapter then because she's very all over the place. You know, a succinct paragraph is almost impossible to find. Like you have to, she's really like very ADHD. Um, okay, how about if here, random, all right, relatively random, about Boy Capel. Now, you know that Boy Capel was one of Coco's big loves, and he unfortunately, you know, uh, unalived in a, in, a, in a motorbike, a car accident. So anyway, um, she was talking about the house that they had together, where they lived together, apartment house where they lived together, and how she would like to kind of set up the, the house, put flowers and this and that. So she said, our house was full of flowers. But beneath the luxurious surroundings, Boy Capel maintained a strict outlook in keeping with his moral character, which was that of the well-brought-up Englishman. In educating me, he did not spare me. He commented on my conduct. You behaved badly. You lied. You were wrong. He had that gently authoritative manner of men who know women well and who love them implicitly. One day, I said to Boy Capel, I'm going to work. I want to make hats. Fine. You'll do very well. You'll get uh, through a lot. Um, you'll get, though. Ah, you'll get, though, a lot of money. But that doesn't matter. You need to keep busy. It's an excellent idea. The most important thing is that you're happy. The women I saw at the races wore enormous loaves on their heads, Constructions made of feathers and improved with fruits and plumes. But worst of all, which appalled me, their hats did not fit on their heads. I have mentioned that I wore mine pulled down over the ears. I rented rooms on the first floor of a building in the Rue Cambon. I still have it. On the door it read, Chanel Mode. Capel put an excellent woman at my disposal, Madame Aubert, whose real name was Mademoiselle de Saint-Pont. She advised me and guided me. In the grandstands, people began talking about my amazing, unusual hats, so neat and austere, which were somehow a foretaste of the Iron Age that was to come. 
but which had not yet dawned. Customers came, initially prompted by curiosity. One day I had a visit from one such woman who admitted quite openly, I came to have a look at you. This is Chanel talking about herself. You see what I mean? So anyway, that's just a little quote from the book, The Allure of Chanel. And uh, yeah, Coco is like, I'm the one who wore my fashion the best. I'm the one that you came to see because at the end of the day, the entertainment is here, baby. You know what I mean? <laughs> so buy the book, you guys. Buy this book. It is amazing. I highly recommend it. I mean, it's released by many different uh, editors. I have Pushkin Press. Love the book. Pushkin, you're amazing for doing this, for uh, editing this, for issuing this book. I'm not sponsored, by the way. I bought it. I have sev I bought several editions of this book. I even have an edition of The Lure of Chanel um, where there are like drawings and sketches of uh, Karl Lagerfeld for every chapter. So every time a new edition of this book comes out, truth be told, I, I buy it. But I like this one the most because this is the smallest edition that was ever released. So I can travel with it, you know, because it's very tiny. So there you go. This is The Allure of Chanel by Paul Morand. Five Foot Nothing said, I bought it last week. Well, there you go. Good. Because this, this is a doozy of a read. This is a doozy of a read. Teresa says, it must have been wonderful to live in the Edwardian age like Chanel did. Hmm. And in a way, yes, if you had money. <laughs> Debbie says, that would be one I would want with the drawings. They still have it, Debs, uh, on Amazon, I do believe. Mon petit, the KDP. Deb says, unalived, LOL. I just say he went to his greater glory, wherever that may be. Deb shops, I say that only because on YouTube... Uh, the algorithm blocks you off if you use other words. Certain words you cannot use. Otherwise, uh, you're not deemed advertiser friendly. So, you guys, I hope you've enjoyed this journey through the fashion world and the, you know, ever-changing landscape of fashion, the commerce of fashion. And uh, I hope you've liked uh, what tweed we managed to weave together today uh, in this live stream as we kind of ventured through the journeys and adventures of these few brands. And uh, I hope uh, that I can see you all very, very soon in my next live stream. But until then, I want to say thank you to the mods. A special thanks Hit it, to bubbles. the mods in the fashion bunker. Thanks to Debbie, Jessa, Sondriation, Nicole Kevs, and Gloria. Bubbles loves you. There you go. We'll go, we'll go, you guys. Thank you, mods. So today we had Gloria, we had Debbie, we had Kev. The other mods were, you know, missing in action, but they'll be back soon, don't you worry. And of course, Terry already knows it. Terry's like, let's do we'll go, we'll go. Hit it, Bubbles. Uh-huh. Yes. Yes, Banana Man. Yes, Banana Man. I'll be there in a jiffy. Mm-hmm. Yes. Love you loads. Love. Love your banana. Bye. And I'm living ferret. I'm living ferret, living ferret. Living ferret the living banana. Living ferret, living ferret, living ferret, living ferret. And we're also dying, Ferret. Dying, Ferret. Dying, Ferret. Dying, Ferret. Dying, Ferret. Dying, Ferret. Mmm. Mmm. Delicious, honey. Why did I think the banana was fake, says Katie B. Honey, Katie, you know we keep it real in the bunker. No fakery here. If I pull out a banana... I'ma eat that banana. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Ain't nothing fake here, says Lux 84. Mm -mm. No ferrets were harmed during this song. Only a banana. Kev. Kev's, Kev is usually composed, but then from time to time, Kev loses it. Says, shove it down so deep. <laughs>
<laughs> and now Kev is going to be like, huh? Queen? What? No, nothing. I meant nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Kirk, I adore bananas. Jolie says, I need a living ferret and a dying ferret bag charm. Hmm. Good to know. <gasps> yeah, Holly. We Holly says, we've lost it. Honey, we've never had it. <laughs> mm. Anyway. Um, mm. Lux84 says, it needs to be thicker. Oh, where are my size queens in the chats? Um, yeah, Kev, there you go. <laughs> Kev's like, nothing. I'm just posting cheeky. Uh, nothing. <laughs> Kev is like, who? Nothing. <laughs> so. <clears throat> Predator Baby Yoda. Baby Yoda. We'll go, we'll go. You want some banana too? No? You want a nugget? And there's the never-ending story of the chicken nuggets and baby Yoda. You know that the prices at McDonald's went up. I'm not going to get you chicken McNuggets. We got to find all other alternatives. Healthy food, something that, you know, not McDonald's. They're charging you like $2 a nugget. Yeah, what? what? Uh, no, we got, we got to find better solutions. You want a banana? Banana? No. Okay. It's that alien. All right. Um, you want to sing for for the people? Cha 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 cha. Yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. Go for it. Cha 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 cha. Cha 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 cha. Cha 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 cha. You did great. Boop. <laughs> okay. There you go, baby Yoda, singing cha 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 as um, a kind of a standard repertoire of the fashion bunker as we conclude yet another chapter of this ratchet fashion world and innuendo. I hope you had fun. I hope you had many seasons in the sun. And I hope to see you all very soon in the next live stream. Until then, never forget to never give up on love. Stay, you know, perky, chirpy, you know, stay snatched, you know, feel your oats. <laughs> Ariana says, I've been watching this for for an hour. I thought I'm rewatching. Didn't realize it's live. It's live, sweetie. Hope everyone enjoys the rest of their week, says Terry. Have a fabulous rest of your week, you guys. If I don't see you sooner, then I'll see you on Saturday. Love you loads. Never give up on love. Take care. Mwah.